maybe 180 miles away from Neva. But look at this. You see the miles run through that power tee. And you feel right at home from the great Smoky Mountains to the Memphis Riverside. And I'll tell you, I feel right at home with one of my best buddies of all time, Jesse Palmer. Welcome back to the Thank ABC you, booth, my man. Good to be here. Glad to have you. All right, let's talk about the Orange Bowl MVP, Joe Milton. One of the most intriguing prospects, I think, all, in all of college football is because of his physical skill set, right? 6'5", 240, he's athletic, and he has the best arm in all of college football. He makes wild throws, and because of that talent, they believe this offense can continue to be prolific. There's a double post concept in the Orange Bowl against Clemson. Every NFL team runs this play. Every NFL starting quarterback can make the throw. But you can count on one hand how many guys make it look like that special. The problem, though, throughout his career has been deep ball accuracy. It's well documented. Here against Pitt two years ago, tight end to the flat, occupies two defenders. You've got a streaking receiver wide open. This is a throw Joe Milton has missed time after time throughout his career. So consistency this season for Joe Milton is big. If he can play the way he did against Clemson in the Orange Bowl week in and week out through a brutal schedule, then this team is a college football playoff contender. This start of his Tennessee career. Virginia won the toss. They elect to defer. Josh Heifel ready to go. 34-year-old walk-on who served in the U.S. Marine Corps, Matt Ganyard, is the kickoff specialist for Virginia. He flew helicopters in the military. He's in the Darden School of Business, and he's 34 to kick off the season as Virginia returns to the sport. D. Williams on the return for Tennessee as Williams gets a little something extra and a good return to set up Joe Milton and this Tennessee high-flying offense. Everybody talking about accuracy. You say it's a misnomer when it comes to Milton and the criticism. Listen, he's been uh, he's been given the keys to a very fast and shiny car. There's no doubt about that. You got to remember too. Joe Milton's got two and a half years now in Josh Heupel's system. He won the starting job back in 2021 before being injured and losing it to Hendon Hooker. He's got a good understanding of what Heupel wants to do. A lot of people excited to see him get this thing started today. Jamin Wright will run the ball and nearly catches a seam before he was just tripped up by James Jackson. And listen, everybody knows what they do offensively, but don't sleep on the run game. Tennis. No, not at all, really. It's kind of what they're known for. Everyone thinks this is sort of an air raid strike attack where they throw it 90 times a game. It's not the case. Yeah, they go fast. Last year, though, they ran it 55% of the time. And even short throws like that, that's an extension of the running game. And that was a quick one to Jalen Wright. Seven yards for a first down. And this is the tempo that you always see out of Tennessee. Right again, straight up the middle, and it's a good chunk play by Jalen Wright as he spins his way inside the 30. You can say the tempo really puts pressure on defenses because they have to get the call in from the sideline, communicate it, and get lined up. And if you don't do that, Tennessee snaps it so quickly before you're ready, and then they gash it. 21 yards for Wright, straight to the line. They snap it again, and here he goes again as Jalen Wright is off to a big start for the Bombs. Well, Lex Long with the tackle. Virginia's lucky there because Jalen Wright tackled himself. That should have been a walk-in touchdown. Right now, this Virginia defense is on their heels. You see Tennessee slowing down right now with the tempo in the red zone. Here's an opportunity for Virginia now to collect themselves with their backs against the wall. Jalen Wright, three carries for 41 yards on this opening drive. This time, trying to find something. Not much there against the inside of that Virginia defense. A defensive line that they do have confidence in. Yeah, very good. I think when you look at 94, Aaron Famui, number 90, Jameer Carter inside. Big athletic guys that can be very disruptive. And they're going against the Tennessee offensive line without their starting center, Cooper Mays. Had an upper body injury earlier in camp. He's not going today. He's replaced by Ollie Lane, who got some time left here at left guard. But now you see the tempo slowing down. Virginia able to get some substitutions out on that D-line to keep guys fresh. Dylan Sampson comes in at running back. Second down and eight. Milton's going to keep it himself, and Milton doesn't find much against the interior of that defensive line with Bryce Carter making the tackle for the Hoos. You know, and I think Joe Milton's running ability is something that has to show up in this game, right? Third downs, especially in the red zone. And you know Virginia is really keying on that. That time, a great job outside slanting to the middle 
to bring down a very big quarterback. First third down of the drive they have faced as he quickly gets it to Squirrel White, and Squirrel White is wrestled out of bounds, short of the line to make. So bend but don't break for the Virginia defense on third down. They're expecting Josh Heupel to go for this. Last year, no team converted more fourth downs than the Tennessee Volunteers. First drive of the season, you're trying to create some momentum and get it on your side as a golden opportunity. See last year, top 12 in major college football on fourth down conversion. This a fourth and five. Milton has time. Gets it to Sampson. Sampson gets to the stick and gets to the goal line for a Tennessee touchdown. Dylan Sampson. Joe Milton with a nine-yard touchdown to Dylan Sampson. It's a well-managed drive, and then the fourth down conversion as Charles Campbell, the transfer kicker from Indiana, caps it. They went eight plays, 62 yards. Got a touchdown on fourth down to Sampson, and they did it in under three minutes. This Vols offense right back to where they left off. Looking back at that touchdown pass, great job progressions by Joe Milton here. He's got two in-breaking routes. His first read's there, his second read's there, his third read is Dylan Sampson coming out of the backfield on the swing. It's a nice job getting through it, and I think you're seeing the poise we talked about, Joe. You're seeing this is a quarterback who's been in the system for two and a half years. He understands it on a critical down and distance, fourth down, first drive of the year. He comes through. You see what Tennessee just does early. I mean, he scored a touchdown on their opening drive last year eight times. Eight times. When you saw the tempo yeah. of that first drive, too, by the way. I mean, it's got everybody in the stadium on their heels. You can only imagine what Virginia and John Wazinski, their defensive coordinator, is going through now, trying to make adjustments. That's terrible to kick off. It means Starlin, the return man, who let it go over his head. This Virginia team, of course, that returns to play after the unspeakable horrors at the end of last season. It's Mike Collins, the heroic survivor of the tragic shooting. And his offense now comes out for the first time. Collins is not coming out on this opening play, but Tony Musket is. He's the transfer quarterback from Monmouth. What is your read, Jesse, on Tony Musket? I uh, watched a lot of FCS film watching uh, Tony Musket go. He plays fast. He gets set up quickly, gets the ball out quickly, makes his reads, and that's going to be important against the Tennessee defense that loves to bring pressure. Empty look to start his career at Virginia. Inside pressure incomplete as he was looking for Malik Washington, the transfer for Northwestern. Aaron Beasley had coverage for Tennessee. He's probably my favorite player on this Tennessee defense. He was wearing number 24 a year ago. This guy is fast, and he can make plays. And Tony Musket's a guy that, when you watch him on film, it just didn't look like he belonged. He's got arm talent. He's athletic. He can throw on the move, throws a deep ball. But you're curious to see how he's going to relate now to the speed of this game at the FBS level. You see that sea of orange right behind him. Massive Tennessee crowd here in Nashville. Harris Jones, the running back, clanking musket. Second down. He's going to loft it downfield. Good-looking ball. Trying to high point it, but Malachi Fields unable to come down with it. Camille Haddon had coverage against a very big and talented receiver. Yeah, Mal Fields. Malachi Fields is six foot four, and he specializes in these high point throws. This is a nice job by a musket giving him an opportunity. Kamal Haddon, though, great job. He never got his head turned around, but he was able to knock that away. Mike Hollins is in the game. Mike Hollins returns to college football on third down and ten. He's the pass protection running back. They get it quick to the outside to Washington as Washington weaves his way to the 30, but that will be five yards short of the line to gain. A new starting slot receiver for Virginia after three years at Northwestern. So the Who's offense will trot off. 
And they will be punting away. And they will do so with Daniel Sparks, the big talented punter who led the ACC in average yards per punt a year ago. D. Williams back to return for the balls. Can't imagine a better start for Tennessee, right? Go down the field, score a touchdown on your opening drive, and now force a three and out. Williams calls for the fair catch inside the 20-yard line. We well, just saw Joe Milton just come right down the field, a mix of the pass and the run. But you think about his career. Remember, he came out of Florida and was the big talk about at Michigan. He won the job there at Michigan. He was there for two seasons, then lost the job to Cade McNamara, and he made his way down to Tennessee, where it was Joe Milton, and people forget this, it was Joe Milton who beat out Hendon Hooker as a starting So player. I want to give him a lot of credit because he stuck with this program. In an era of college football where quarterbacks and players in general lose their job, they enter the transfer portal. We've seen quarterbacks enter it multiple times. Joe Milton could have gone somewhere else after 2021. He'd be starting somewhere. He believes that Tennessee is the best environment for him to win a national championship and to play in the NFL, and you got to commend him for his toughness. Quickly to the outside to Jabari Small. Jabari Small, the running back from Memphis, Tennessee, went to Briarcrest Christian, same high school that Hugh Freeze once coached, and Michael Orr, blindside movie fan. So watching the tempo, right, and also how they attack the perimeter of the field, forcing the defense to go east and west. Small probing for something, only getting two yards. The strength of Virginia's defense is this defensive line. They've got a lot of big athletic dudes, and they're very, very deep, and they can take games over. They slant, and they move, and they stunt. Tennessee's offensive line, they've got the work cut out for them. They've got to do a great job communicating and passing guys off. Virginia's without Chico Bennett, who is considered their best edge rusher. He's out with an injury. They look to give a gap pressure. It's picked up. Milton with time over the middle, but tackled maybe a half yard short of the line to make as Jabari Small as Cam Butler for John Radzinski's defense was there to make the tackle. Here's fourth down. It looks like Josh Heifel's going to go for it again inside their own 30-yard line. Joe Milton under center. Fourth and one from their own 29. Small. This is going to be close. That Virginia front thinks that they put up a wall. And based on that mark, as you see Lex Long with his hand up, the Hoos stop him on fourth down. It was Lex Long in the middle. It was Cam Butler on the outside. Nobody from Tennessee blocked those guys. Unbelievable and a critical down and distance. A huge gamble in that D-line we're talking about. Here's Cam Butler inside. He's slanting. Here's Lex Long on the inside. Nobody touches those two guys. And they're able to make a play in the backfield and now set up Tony Musket in this Virginia offense in phenomenal field position. So John Radzinski, the defensive coordinator for Virginia, said, I got faith in my front. Well, they just did well for him. And now this Virginia offense is serving this on a platter here, starting at the 29 with Paris Jones flanking Musket. Musket quickly gets it to Washington, and Washington is wrapped up. We're seeing Des Kitchings, the offensive coordinator for Virginia. He's trying to get Tony Musket into a rhythm early in this game. We talked about it, right? It's the first time in an FBS game against a Power 5 opponent. Easy throws, ball out of his hands early, get him some completions, try to get him some confidence. You know, Billy, who's the transfer from BYU, the linebacker from Tennessee, had the tackle there. He had a breakout fall camp. Second down run, Jones can't get anything trying to get around that right side as it was penetration by the De yeah. Tennessee front. It was Omar Norman Lott, a transfer from Arizona State that was able to break through in the middle. That's a big impact transfer for this Tennessee defense. He's twitched up. He made a big play there. Now if you're Tony Musket, inside the 30-yard line, you're in field goal range. You've got to be smart. If it's not open, you throw this away. You must come away with points here after stopping Tennessee on fourth down. Third down and nine. Pressure. Hollins picks it up. And it's complete. Inside the 10-yard line to six foot four, 220-pound target, Malachi Field. Mike Collins is a key in this game for Virginia, not just because his ability running the ball, but also in pass protection. Great job that time picking up the blitzing Aaron Beasley. And here is Mike Collins. 
his first carry back. Mike Hollins, the heroic survivor of the tragic shooting. Carrying the ball for the first time. Young man who carries a football again, and in reality, a young man who's helped carry an entire grieving community for 293 days now. You know, this is an emotional day for him, but imagine his teammates as well. He's been such an inspiration to them. The fact that they're all out here together on this day, a big step in the healing process. Two tight ends, little window dressing shifting on second and goal. Short pitch, Hollins. Hollins trying to keep his balance, but he was forced down. It was Jalen McCullough, the first man to penetrate there before the defense collapsed on Mike Hollins. And this was one of the better red zone defenses in the country a year ago, Tennessee. They only allowed opponents to score on 75% of those possessions. And a big reason why, they're good against the run in an area of the field where it's hard to throw the football because the windows get really small. Big moment in the game early for Tony Musket here on third down with one tight end, three wide receiver set. Third and goal from the 11 at a loss of three. Musket. Going to tuck and run and barely gets back to the line of scrimmage as Omar Norman Lott at 300 pounds was waiting for him. So number 41, Will Betridge, the place kicker, comes out. Number 41 because he went to goal for prep in Miami with the late Deshaun Perry who was tragically lost in the shooting and that was Perry's number and this is Will Betridge's way of honoring his former high school and college teammate a 28 yard attempt Jared Raymond the holder Aiden Livingston the snapper and it stayed just off to the side so no good from 28. A missed opportunity after the excellent turnover on downs by that Virginia defensive line. 7-zip, Tennessee. It's gonna be it's gonna be a good day. Just yeah. just for these kids to be here today to make it to this point. Yeah. You know that that bunch what they've been through. Yes, sir. I'm excited for them. Yeah, so awesome. Friday, man. Welcome home. Hey, yes, you laid on the line. Have some fun, all right? Sir, turn it loose, baby. Go. Turn it loose. Turn it loose. How about this, man? Huh? How about this? <laughs> Have you some fun today? Hey, it's what you came here for now, right? It's what you came here for. Have some doggone fun today now. Let's go. Let's go. UVA head coach Tony Elliott, who, Jesse, obviously, he's had so much more to deal with than just yeah. getting ready for football. Yeah, and he's been honest uh, talking to us this week, too. Yeah. He said, look, I, I don't know how my players are going to respond in this game because of the emotion, and they're going to see tributes today, and some of them may get activated by what they see, but the fact that they can all be here together having fun playing the sport they love means so much. Joe Tessitore, Jesse Palmer, Katie George with you here. As Joe Milton is Tennessee offense, and here's your first glimpse. And the strong arm is dropped by Ramel Keaton. Boy, oh boy, did Bazooka Joe air that out. Well, you can't put that one on Joe Milton. We talked earlier about some of the accuracy issues he's had throwing deep. This was a beautifully thrown ball. Keaton wide open, gets behind the defense. And that's just a play you've got to make if you're Tennessee he threw that from the 15 yard line to nearly the other 20 and it looked effortless right like I mean, no strain at all it just jumps out of his hands he's going to keep it here and the Virginia defense tried to read it as best they could before they were able to corral him at the 23 how about in pregame on college game day when the guys were talking to him and he was wired up and they ca he casually they said how long did, how far did you throw it this offseason uh, I think I threw it 90. 90. Just casually drops. I threw it 90 yards. Unbelievable. It really is. I'll tell you, this Virginia defense right now, they got some mojo going. Third down and seven. Milton. And that strike is broken up. That was Lex Long defensively breaking it up. Well, Lex Long's made some big plays. Remember, he had to stop on fourth down. He's rangy, 6'3", 225. And that time, it looked like Joe Milton might have been staring his receiver down, coming in from the left-hand side. He didn't look the safety off long enough. I don't care how strong your arm is. Very lucky Lex Long didn't come away with an interception there. 
The Australian Jackson Ross into punt. Ethan Davies back for Virginia. 24-year-old Aussie. And this is sent out of bounds. So the Virginia defense, they said they had faith in them. They can lean on them. Last couple series, we've seen it. ABC College Football is presented by Gillette Labs, the next generation of shaving. Here in Nashville, the third time Tennessee has played their season opener at Nissan Stadium. They just had a 16-yard punt, Katie, so now it's the second straight drive starting in Tennessee territory for UVA's new quarterback, Tony Musket. You know, Tess, on day one, apparently he walked into the locker room and said, hey, boys, we're throwing it this time. I expect you to be there. He immediately took charge. And Tony Elliott said what he appreciates most about Musket is he accepts the responsibility that comes with playing the quarterback position. A lot of guys want to be the quarterback at this level, but they're not willing to accept the accountability that comes with the role. Musket welcomes it, and I've seen a very poised guy so far early on in this game. He's a Virginia native. And then he was under-recruited, so he started his college career up in New Jersey at Monmouth and now makes his way to Charlottesville where he is the starting quarterback to start this season. From the 40, play action. Musket just had to burn it that time. What a change a year makes. Last year, look at that. <laughs> he started the season at New Hampshire. He was at UNH in front of 8,700 fans. Yeah, I watched that game. And listen, I mean, like, you're one. You're the one. How are you going to transition to the speed of this game? That's one thing I'm so excited about watching today. How does he respond to the speed of the game? And also, how do his teammates respond to him? Sitting back watching that film, getting ready for this game. Ooh. He is smothered. And now the penetration from Big O, Amari Thomas, at 320 pounds. You already talked about Omar Norman Lott, the Arizona State transfer. How about 6'4", 320, Big O? His ability and his quickness off the ball. He's a guy that surprised a lot of people not going to the NFL and declaring this past season. Wanted to come back. He wanted to be more consistent. And now you're set up in a third and long situation. Tennessee has their cheetah package on the field. Tyler Barron, a defensive end, has moved to the inside, number nine. That's a guy you got to watch for in these passing situations going up against center and guards. He has seven and a half career sacks, does Tyler Barron. So they get the speed moved in. There he is as Jesse points him out. And now you're going to get a timeout used by Des Kitchens, the offensive coordinator, and Tony Elliott to talk things over and facing a third and 15. And with that, a chance for the first time this season to say good afternoon to our dear friend Kevin Nagandi in the studio. What's up, Kev? Good afternoon, Tess. Time now for our All-State Good Hands Plays. And let's start with prime time already in Fort Worth. The first drive, Colorado Shador Sanders with the touchdown book. Caught him in man coverage, Kevin. That's what Prime said. Tess, we coming. Oh, TCU, remember, last year's runner-up in the red zone. But how about Chandler Morris picked off by Trevor Woods? Really good eyes in zone coverage, reading the quarterback and getting the pick. 7-0 Buffalo so far. Back to you guys. Yeah, Boog is all hyped about the Colorado passing game. Shador Sanders already 12 of 15 for 81 yards and a touchdown. His prime takes over at Colorado. Yeah, getting Sean Lewis calling plays in Colorado and Boulder, man. That was a big get for prime. So off the timeout, third and 15. Musket again slicing through. That was James Pearson. You said it. That cheetah package, the speed on the defensive line on third and long. Yeah, and it's coming from the right side. That time, it's just Pierce using his speed. He sets up to the outside like he's going to swim the right tackle. You go to Nana. Here he is here. Bounce to the inside. This Virginia offensive line has four new starters. They, they think they're more athletic than a year ago, but that is going to be put to the test against this speed from Tennessee up front. Last two plays, a loss of 12 yards. The Sparks on to punt again. Nose down, turns it over. And Dee Williams forced to call for the fair catch at about the 24. I want to remind you that coming up tonight right here on ABC at 7.30 Eastern, the Battle of the Carolinas, Duke's Mayo Classic, number 21 North Carolina, Drake Mayak quarterback against Kakalaki, South Carolina.
Carolina with Spencer Rattler. Yeah. Excellent special teams, athletes all over the place. Yeah, two of the best prospects at the quarterback position playing on Sunday next year. Drake May, man, I know people talk a lot about his ability throwing it, but this dude can run it too. I'm excited to see this one. This could be whichever quarterback has the ball last. Joe Milton, five of seven for 23 yards. Had a deep ball dropped by Ramel Keaton moments ago. Now a first down. Throws it quickly to the outside, and Keaton makes up for it as he works for the extra yards on a first down. So this Virginia defense is bend, don't break. They play big zone coverages, keep the ball in front. They rally and tackle. They've got eight starters back from a year ago. They're sneaky good in these last two drives. They're feeling themselves a little bit. And now again to the outside, Dante Thornton, a transfer from Oregon, who's got a big frame and tons of speed. He's six foot five, 210 pounds. Guys aren't supposed to run like that when you're that big. You put on his film last year against Washington in Utah. He was making lots of plays for the Ducks. Injured player. And now you hear the cascade of boos as this Nissan Stadium that's filled with Tennessee fans. They don't like anything that slows down the pace of play, but obviously we've got to take the time out for a defensive player who is down on a knee. Josh Ahern, fifth-year linebacker, who the medical staff is out to see. And he's a leader in this defense, too, a guy that this, this whole unit really rallies around. We talked earlier about all these perimeter quick throws, how it forces the defense to run east and west. And that time, Ahern, who's booking it to the outside, obviously slow to get up. And as you mentioned, Joe, it is a trend in college football, right? We've seen, sure. you know, at the onset of, of tempo and and offense is trying to go quickly. De defenses will do whatever they can to try to slow it down. I don't blame the guy for being hurt after running that much all the way across the field. You see him here going in for the tackle. And he gets up and he starts running away. It kind of seemed like he was going to be okay. And right at that moment, he's oh like, no, no, no. Well. There are some points of emphasis in college football rules. That could be one of them that they're trying to concentrate on. Second down and three. Milton looking for an option, doesn't find one, so the legs become it, and look at him stride. Crossing midfield as Joe Milton. I love the decision-making, too. This is what Hendon Hooker was so good at a year ago. First guy's not open, second guy's not open. I'm taking off. 17-yard run. Now Jalen Wright. As he chugs ahead for a good play and taken down by Ben Smiley. Going back and looking at that play again, you see him. He's looking down. they got two in-breaking routes. He's not even thinking check down here. He's like, I'm taking off 6'5", 240 with wheels like that. And Jalen Wright was being covered up by the linebacker who ran him off. And Milton said, I got a big lane. Second and two. Good pass protection for Milton. Flick of the wrist to the end zone and incomplete at the last possible second. That ball was knocked away by Jonas Sanker as Dante Thornton was the target. The ball was just a little bit underthrown. It was a great job by Sanker to get his head around here. Milton had what he wanted. He had his big transfer Thornton one-on-one. -on -one. At 6'5", that's one you'd like to put out in front, let him go climb the ladder if he needs to. That's another big-time play by Virginia's defense. We've seen multiple. False start on the offense. Not all 11 players got set. It is third down. So that'll back him up. First penalty of the afternoon on Tennessee. And Tennessee fans have seen this before, right? This was the most penalized team in right. the SEC a year ago with about eight a game, and it's penalties like that that drive Josh Heupel crazy. You expect there's going to be penalties between the whistles, but it's the pre-snap ones and the post-snap ones. The mental errors, those will keep you up in there. You can have those penalties, but it's often offset when you're number one in total yards at 538 yards per game, right? So the fans see all the glory of the offense. <laughs> Third down and seven. Jabari Small comes in at running back. Milton on third and seven. Pressure, and they take him down. Collapsing down on Joe Milton was Sue Ogonloye. The senior defensive tackle with the sack of Joe Milton.
It was the stunts inside. We talked about the movement, and it's Fal Mui right here who's going to loop out. You got a guy coming to the inside, and that creates the pressure initially. You see Tennessee's offensive line all tangled, uh, all tangled up. Agun Loye, he's the one that ends up getting the sack, but that movement up front, how athletic, athletic Virginia is defensively, it's something to watch. So good job by Virginia's front again, Jackson Ross. As he looks to pin the Hoos, and did they get it? Oh. oh, great effort there, but it will be a touchback as we will take a break just seven zip tennessee virginia defense looking good what do you got kevin yes we got some breaking news iowa's offense scored their first <laughs> touchdown less than a minute into the game former michigan quarterback kate mcnamara dan olovsky not only that but they start the season essentially with a double move for a touchdown to seth anderson great ball by kate 14 nothing over utah state and then michigan and jj mccarthy yeah, I love J.J. Scrambling up in the pocket and then keeping his eyes downfield, finding the open receiver. Right now, they're up 7-0 against East Carolina. Back to you, Tess and Jesse. Kate McNamara is a former teammate of Joe Milton. Wait, Iowa scored already? Exactly. You're shocked. And right now, this Virginia offensive line is having a real struggle up front. Tyree West is able to take down Tony Musket. And again, it's that right side of the offensive line for Virginia that seems to be having problems. Yugona Nana is an athletic transfer from Houston, but he's got his hands full right now dealing with this talented and deep Tennessee front. Three straight tackles for loss for Tennessee, Jesse. You look at the pressure they put on. Nine dropbacks been making it hard on him five of those times second and 13 this time he is able to get it out but incomplete trying to hit J.R. Wilson one thing I watched on film test with Tony Musket when he gets hit his eyes tend to come down a little bit and that's something to watch for in this game watching him play against Maine last year that happened early against a good defense and all of a sudden he wasn't getting through progressions started getting a bit antsy he's been hit already a couple times early in this game by Tennessee can he keep his poise and keep his eye focused downfield and all he has to do is listen to 65,000 Tennessee fans to realize this isn't Maine third and 13 <laughs> again the pressure gets to him James Pierce that is his second of the day. On the last drive, we saw Pierce set up outside and then beat him to the inside. This time, one and one, it was Pierce and Nana. This time, he just comes around the outside, and it's pure speed. Virginia's going to have to do something now from a play-calling standpoint to help out their right tackle. That means keeping a tight end in, getting it back to go and chip block. But Tony Musket has no time right now to throw. Third UVA three and out out of four drives. Williams, look at this return. Williams fumbles the ball, and Virginia recovers. Suangaloye with the recovery. So a special teams miscue. Tennessee would have had prime field position. But instead, they fumble it away. Virginia's offense is going to be right back out there. ESPN College Football presented by Gillette Labs. We will return after this message and a word from our ABC stations. Now, this is an unfortunate situation, Jesse. Sua Gunloye, who just had the fumble recovery, had a good play defensively earlier, too, is being taken off the field in the cart. Remember, now, he ran off the field after that excellent fumble recovery, then celebrating, Jesse, did this. Just looks like he slips a little bit. We've seen this before, right? Mason Smith last year at LSU yes. early in the year. Martin Gramatica. It's the celebrations, and you see he's having a hard time standing up. Down he goes. He's already made a couple of huge plays in this game, too. He's got a massive impact on this Virginia defense. And I just saw Tony Elliott run over to the golf cart just to check on him, see how he's doing. You hate to see that. Moments ago, Katie caught up with Tony Elliott, the head coach. 
Coach Elliott, I know establishing the run game is important to you. What do you need to see from your offensive line moving forward? Yeah, they just need to settle in, you know, and, and, uh, and the quarterbacks just manage the system, and it's college football, right? We're back playing. Uh, obviously, got to work out a couple kinks. Offensive line's trying to develop some chemistry. The biggest thing is take it one play at a time and see can we figure out what scheme's going to work in the run game, uh, do a little better in protection, and then just capitalize on opportunities. Defense is playing their tail off, and uh, we're going we're gonna to get it together. After that opening drive, your defense, as you mentioned, has been rock solid. Pass breakup, pressure. What's impressed you most about their efforts? Uh, they're just continuing to play, play after play. And even if the Tennessee's making a play, they're coming right back the next play and locking back in, hurry up and getting lined up. So they're just, you know, trusting in the game plan and playing as hard as they can. Thank you for the time. Right, thank you. All right. Kobe Pace with a five-yard run. Jesse, in that first quarter, they had minus 23 yards rushing. Yeah, no. I mean, this is something they simply have to do. And the thing is, is the running back room is probably their deepest position on offense. Kobe Pace, the Clemson transfer, with a nice run there to the perimeter. But they have got to get these guys going. Pace again, and he is wrapped up and torn down. That was Joshua Joseph. It takes so much pressure off Tony Muska, too, right? You can't be living in third and long situations against this defense with their athleticism up front. Another critical third down here because they've had a little success running it. At least this is a lot more manageable. But Tony Muska doesn't necessarily have to hold on to the ball very long here in the passing. Third down and four, so a little more manageable this time for the transfer quarterback, Tony Musket. Mike Hollins will flank him. He's been on pass pro for many third downs, and we'll get a pre-snap movement call. False start. Offense, number 44. Five-yard penalty. It is third down. And it was on the tight end, second Wood. First penalty on Virginia today. Well, so much for everything we just said about manageable third downs. Now we're back into a third and long situation, so your eyes immediately have to go to the right side of that Virginia offensive line. Ugana Nana, he's had his hands full with James Pierce, who already has two sacks. What do they do here schematically to help out their right tackle over here? There's number 27 over to the right side of your screen going up against Nana, big 71 on third and nine. Low snap, Musket just goes underneath and driven back his fields by Aaron Beasley. Aaron Beasley, who had 12 tackles in that Orange Bowl win against Clemson. He's only 6'1", 225. He's not the biggest middle linebacker in the country, but he plays with an attitude, and he is violent. Great job deciphering the underneath drag route. He was playing downhill. He's able to make the stop and now force a Virginia punt. That's the sixth Tennessee TFL. Wow. Six times they've tackled him behind the line. Sparks on to punt again. His fourth punt already of this afternoon. Just a couple minutes into the second quarter. As he looks to flip the field, it's a big, booming sky punt that goes inside the 10 and is batted back. Tremendous special teams by Virginia with Keith Gather and Drew Meyer, their coordinators, and Daniel Sparks just launches it. 62 yards turning it over. Yeah, okay, but Blake Corum averaging nearly 10 yards a carry so far this afternoon. One He's of got the best running backs in the country. So good to see him back on the field after suffering that knee injury yeah. late last year. So after the excellent, excellent special teams effort from the Hoos and Sparks punt and then the coverage unit downing it. This is from the seven yard line. The start of this drive for Joe Milton and the balls. And Jamari Spall is going to dive ahead over the 10. You just feel like Tennessee has to just take a breath and regain their composure yes. a little bit, right? They got stuffed on fourth down early. Ramel Keaton drops a touchdown. You fumble a punt return. You got to get back on track. Second and five. And they'll move the chains with Jabari Small. A year ago, he was the workhorse in that dominating win at LSU. Had 127 yards and two touchdowns. Milton, play action to the near side and puts it into the ground in front of Squirrel White. And that's another throw Joe Milton just has to make. It's wide open. Squirrel is running a wheel route that's going to convert to a curl if the defender stays high. And we've seen Joe Milton underthrow Dante Thornton on a streak and that time kind of one hop. And he's got he's to regain his composure a little bit too throwing the ball here.
Second and ten. That was thrown up into the outside of Drew McCoy. So it'll be a third down for Joe Milton. Take a look. Most of the work Joe Milton's been doing has been really underneath. They've taken some shots, but when they have, they haven't come away with any. Ramel Keaton dropped what would have been a long touchdown. Tennessee is 0 for 4 on third down and now facing a third and 10. And they bring four. And with that, Milton drives the ball downfield, but it's off the hands of Keaton, who went up for it. And again, this UVA defense does their job. But that's three inaccurate throws back to back to back for Joe Milton. The decisions were all good. He was going exactly where he needed to go. This one, though, it just sails on him a little bit. He has Keaton wide open over the middle of the field. Something to keep an eye on for Joe Milton. We've known at this point up to his career, coaches said that when things go bad, he sometimes seems to stay down. He's got to be able to turn the page next time he takes the field. Third straight punt for Tennessee as Ross rolls out, booms it away, and again, it doesn't keep it in the field of play. Remember, he had a 16-yard punt earlier. And now this effort. As we remind you that there is more college football coming your way. ESPN Plus tonight. 6 o'clock is number one Georgia hosting Tennessee Martin. 7 o'clock, K-State will be in action. And Texas State faces Baylor. That's on ESPN Plus. You can go to ESPNPlus.com, download the ESPN app. It'll be interesting to see Carson Beck as the quarterback now for the Dogs. Here's a golden opportunity for Virginia again. We saw earlier in the first quarter they got a stop on fourth down. They didn't come away with any points though missed a field goal another great opportunity for Tony Musket in this offense to come away with something here in Tennessee's end of the field yeah third UVA drive that starts in Tennessee territory Musket sprints right avoids the pressure and now he's going to tuck and try to get around the corner before Big O chased him down Amari Thomas but there you're seeing a little bit of the athleticism that Tony Musket has right he has the ability to get out on the perimeter and make people miss look for a moment there like he might get sacked now after going down Musket got up a little bit gingerly here let's keep an eye on third down, uh, second down seven Jones and after that handoff, Joe, Tony Musket looks like he's hobbling a little bit to me out there. It just doesn't seem like he's able to put all of his weight. Yeah, no doubt. See, he's... Something happened on that hit. It looks like it might be his left foot or left ankle, but he's he's being limited right now, and you see... Anthony Calandria, the true, true freshman. freshman warming up on the sidelines. The true freshman from Florida is warming up. Third down and two is Musket clearly trying to shake something out that left leg. Third down and two. Oh, bad snap. Mike Hollins takes it and is immediately wrapped up by Tyler Barron. That had no chance whatsoever as Ty Furnish, the center, put it into the ground in front of the feet of Tony Musket. Well, that's bad by Furnish for two reasons. One, he rolls the snap back to his quarterback. Two, he doesn't block Barron. This is him right in the middle of the field. Watch. He's completely whiffs on Barron, we've talked about. Normally plays defensive end on third down. They slide him inside. This Virginia offensive line, man. They're in a world of hurt right now. They've got problems all the way across. And just the field position that UVA is being handed time and again by their defense, by their special teams, but and yet sitting here struggling to get anything going offensively is flag comes in. And that's not going to be an issue for Daniel Sparks punting the ball. False start. Offense number two. Five yard penalty. It is fourth down. Sparks was able to pin Tennessee inside the 10 the last time he was out on the field. What a beautiful day here in Nashville. You know, you get these these late August, early September week ones of college football. You could be steaming up in this. Oh, it's perfect. And it is just gorgeous You're here. You're down on the field pregame. Beautiful. And this time they scatter, and again it's inside the 10. So excellent work by the special teams unit. We are here in Nashville, the Grand Old Opry close by as we continue on with the Hoos and the Balls. Seven zip Tennessee here at Nissan Stadium with their new turf. Katie, why am I getting a pina colada vibe? 
because of the organic infill. Apparently, it's really hard to grow grass here in Nashville, so the Titans decided to go to this Helix Matrix turf, which the infill is organic, which means it's coconut shells uh. and cork. So it's not that usual black rubber pellets that we're used to seeing. Good for shock absorption, reduces injury, consistent in all types of climates whether it's wet it's dry it's windy i've heard from players during pregame warm-ups that they actually like the feel of it so the titans are going to be the first ones to roll out this new turf in the 2023 nfl season tennessee and virginia getting a little taste of the corky coconut under their feet yeah and katie we were all walking on the field pregame it feels like grass it looks good but it also feels really good Jabari Small able to get off left tackle. And Jabari Small with the extra late drive for a first down. I think this is what Tennessee has to do now to get back in a rhythm offensively, get back to running the football and being physical. We talked about Virginia's defense playing big zone coverages with not that many guys in the box. Quickly to the outside. As this is McKellen Castles. He is extremely athletic tight end who transferred from UC Davis, started his career at Cal, and he has opened eyes with his athleticism. He goes for 16 yards, and now look at the pace. Milton, flag is down. They're quick to get to that line. False start. Offense, number nine, five-yard penalty. It is first down. Maybe a little too quick, as Keaton is called for the false start. You know, it's funny. You, you always wonder first week, Pre-snap penalties, you're going fast on tempo. Can you get your guys lined up? Can you just go execute? And I think, you know, you thought Virginia might be the team having more issues with that, but we've seen a couple false start penalties here in the first half for Tennessee offensively. First and 15 after the penalty. Milton to the outside again. Drew McCoy. Drew McCoy taking a who for a ride as you hear the cascade of brew, not booze, and a flag is down at the end of the play. Yeah, they're gonna get a hold on John Campbell at left tackle here. Holding offense, number 74. The 10 yard penalty from the previous spot. It is first down. Jess, John Campbell comes over from Miami to lock down that left tackle spot. You see him there on the left side. There's a little game up front. That's Ahern at linebacker blitzing and just Campbell a little bit slow getting to that spot. Remember, Tennessee lost Darnell Wright, the 10th pick of the NFL draft at right tackle, so they had to shuffle some guys around. They moved Jeremiah Crawford from left tackle to right tackle. In comes Crawford, a six-year senior from Miami, who's already become a leader on the team. Yeah, Darnell Wright, 42 career starts. Jabari Small again with the carry, but the realities of this offensive line with Cooper Mays not there at center. Yeah. It's an all-SEC preseason pick. A lot of new faces, too. We didn't even mention the left guard, Andre Carrick from Texas. So there's new faces in a new scheme. Week one against a really good D-line. Second and 22 after the penalty. Milton, a flick of the wrist downfield again. And this time, Keaton is able to secure it. Well, you're seeing the speed of Ramel Keaton. This is a post on the outside. He's able to split the safety and the cornerback. And... Almost looked like Joe Milton just wanted to make sure he didn't overthrow this one. Put lots of air under it for the big play. 41 yards there. And now Milton wants even more. And with that effort, incomplete. As Brew McCoy tried to secure it in the end zone, Cohen King had coverage on him. Wow, you got the 6-3 Brew McCoy against Cohen King. It's the, it's the matchup that Milton wanted. Nice job by King getting his head around to knock that away. Oh. And he makes the catch, but I think the left foot was on the white. Just enough oh, of yeah. that white sideline. Oh. But there you're seeing now the aggressive nature in Tennessee. Run, 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 shot play, shot play. So close, but a great look with the pylon can to show you that that foot was right on the line. So a second and ten. Small. Nothing happening there against Ben Smiley. Ben Smiley getting the start at defensive end for an injured Chico Bennett, UVA's best edge rusher. There's Ahern making a big stop inside, too, at linebacker. We saw him get banged up a little bit early in the game. It's good that he's back now. Looks like he's healthy. Third and seven. Milton quickly to Small. Small lowers the shoulders, tried to reach the line to gain. And he will be marked just short as... Jonas Sanker was able to get to Jabari Small. So another down, uh, fourth down situation. They got stuff the last time they did this. Fourth and one. Small straight ahead. This time he moves the chains. 
No hesitation from Josh Heupel when it comes to these fourth downs. Well, it's amazing, too, with the tempo is you can keep the same personnel in a, in a short yardage situation so that you don't give Virginia an opportunity to substitute. They do now, bringing on fresh legs. That's running back Dylan Sampson, the true freshman, who caught the touchdown in the first quarter. But the tempo now slowing down. This is the, really the one area of the field in this game that we've seen Josh Heifel slow things down, making sure his offense is getting in the right books in the critical area of the field. Sampson. It'll slither his way after he bounced it initially. He's close to the 15-yard line. When you play this tempo, you got to have three running backs at least. Jalen Wright, Jabari Small, and Dylan Sampson because those are the players that don't get to take plays off. Milton. That was deflected away by Josh Ahern. This is an area of the field, too, Tess. I feel like with Joe Milton, we've seen him do this in this game. Things aren't open down here because the windows are smaller. He's got the athleticism to take off and go get it himself. We've seen fast decision-making from Joe Milton in this game. It's another big moment right here. Third and four. On the slant and a first down and a first and goal, Tennessee, as Squirrel White has the completion for the ball. Squirrel had no choice but to catch that. I mean, Joe Milton put it right between the one was a and the zero. I mean, people go to the hospital catching balls like that. First and goal. Milton going to keep it himself. Looking to get around the defender and then just stiff arms him and rolls him over inside the five. And that's Sanker 6 one two ten. <laughs> Milton is 6 five, two, 40. You're Jonas Sanker. You're out there on an island one-on-one -on -one with that monster toting the rock. Great job making the tackle and preventing the touchdown. Second and goal now. Thirteenth play of the drive for Tennessee. As Milton looks over. Josh Heifel still calls the plays. Joey Halsey, the new OC. Sampson. Motors right in. So Dylan Sampson has a nine-yard touchdown catch and now a three-yard touchdown run. Really good job by the offensive line up front working their double teams. He had an outstanding lead block as well. Just a nice job with the inside run. This guy was only a true freshman a year ago. And watching him on film, man, he flashed. He's earned more carries in this offense. And that's the way to respond, I think, if you're Tennessee. Things hadn't been going great. You had a lot of miscues early in the game. But you get back to doing what this offense does. This is not an air raid attack that throws it 90 times a game. They are a run-first offense. And their offensive line really took over on that drive. Charles Campbell, who has a brother and a sister who attend Tennessee, he transferred in, so it's a family affair as the extra point. A 90-yard Tennessee scoring drive that was capped with a power play from Joe Milton. Out on the edge, you know what I'm going to do? I'm just going to steamroll you. And then Dylan Sampson, his second touchdown of this first half, and it's 14 zip, number 12, Tennessee. Great day of full coverage on all the networks, including 6.30 tonight, the ACC Network, ACC Huddle. Crew's going to get you set for Old Dominion and Virginia Tech live from Blacksburg, and they'll be back with a post-game wrap-up all the ACC action of the day. 14-zip, Tennessee on top. And let's check in with Kevin in the studio. Test AT&T 5G, keeping fans connected. So we take a look at our multi-view, which is showcasing a bunch of great games, events across all our networks. Uh, Oklahoma run on ESPN, Dylan Gabriel, fast start. They're up 35-0 early in the second quarter against Arkansas State. SEC Network, you see Kentucky up is 17-7. Also, we've got some tennis for people that love that with the U.S. Open. Third round action over on ESPN2. The men's top seed, Carlos Alcaraz, in action. Back to you guys. 
Akraz Djokovic, real oh, quick. Oh, please, tennis. Uh, give it to me. A couple Great. weeks ago in Cincinnati was <laughs> epic. I think I was going to ask you. I know, you and I both love tennis, but yeah. when, when, Al Kadr when he said Akraz, I know your, your ears perked up. Oh, the night before Wimbledon started, I was over in London visiting my daughter. There he is. Yeah, right. yeah. I had to go over uh, to yeah, the champ. You had a moment. And say, El Campeón de Mundo, Carlos Alcaraz. Downfield and in stride to Malachi Fields with the catch. This is helping their offense, getting Malachi Fields back healthy. Last year had an ACL in the spring, missed most of the year except the Pittsburgh game late. And in that game, he was the one guy Pitt couldn't handle. He's got to be a weapon for them on offense. And now tempo from UVA, and it's working out. Malik Washington secures the catch from Musket. So all of a sudden, the Who's finding their rhythm offensively. And taking the training wheels off, Tony Musket a little bit here. Des Kitchens, at, at, an offensive coordinator now, letting him take some shots. And you're seeing a little bit of tempo, and now they're being aggressive. Look at this from Virginia. Tony Musket, the transfer quarterback from Monmouth. First start for Virginia. Mike Hollins wrapped up. And the TFLs continue and for this Tennessee defense. It was Bryson Eason, the first one to get into the backfield. And you've seen throughout this first half the size and athleticism Tennessee has up front. That's a big reason why they led the SEC a season ago with 7.2 tackles per loss per game. They've already now exceeded that through the first half. They have done an outstanding job recruiting dudes in this area of the field, that side up front. They are a problem. Before this drive, UVA had one first down. They have two on this drive already. Loss of five. TFL second and 15. Musket on the backfield is Mike Hollins. And Hollins is taken down at the 21-yard line. Elijah Hearing with the tackle. And it's another golden opportunity now for Virginia. And you just wonder, I mean, is this four-down territory here in a 14-0 game? Needing to score, needing to generate momentum. They haven't been able to do it. And they've had great field position in this game. They've not been able to come away with points. And now that Tony Musket seems like he's got himself in a little bit of a groove. This is that dreaded third and long scenario, too, right? Yep, that cheetah package that you have detailed. Right. With that front from Tennessee. You've got to have a plan. The clock's got to be going off in your head here for Tony Musket. Third down and 13 for Virginia. An official is going to come and wave in a timeout. Virginia takes its second timeout of the half. So one timeout remains for Virginia. And the unique circumstances, of course, today with all the emotion. And I, I think it was handled beautifully. Obviously, you know the tragic circumstances last November. And then Mike Hollins making his return to football. And, and that has to be unbelievably disruptive, the balance of all the emotion while preparing to play a game against this kind of an opponent. Yeah, it's unbelievable. And it's just, it, it's an incredible story. Remember, everybody on this football team and the program and the community, they're still reeling. And they need this. They need football yes. to come together. Uh, Tony Elliott said it before. We're not moving on. We're moving forward. And th their story is so inspirational, Joe. And that's why, to me, honestly, whether you're a fan of Virginia football or not, or even a fan of college football or not, this is a team that you cheer for because of everything that they have been through. Yeah, Mike Collins coming out, bringing out the flag to lead his team out, and then hitting the field for the first time, a heroic survivor. And now here in pass protection with Musket on third and 13. Can Virginia find a little something here before halftime? Trailing by two touchdowns. Third and 13, Musket pressured again, but he escapes this time. Tucks, runs, and gives a little something at the end as he's able to make it to the 13-yard line. Jesse, you brought up the idea of possibly going for it on fourth down scenario. What do you do here? I think you got to do it here if you're Tony Elliott. I think you take advantage of this and the momentum you've been able to start to build offensively. Tony Musket, he looks like a little bit of a different player. He's allowed the game to come to him. And they've got an awesome opportunity here to capitalize on this. He's played better the less they babied him in the play column. They've allowed him to start being aggressive, taking shots and run to the outside. And I think you got to keep that up. You got to keep the pedal to the metal and trust Tony Musket. Play clock falling down. Looks like they're going to call a timeout here. And you can see, but I'm, that is what they do. I'm watching Tony's body language out there. He wants to go for it. He's yelling to his coaching staff. Let's go. 
Let's see if they do that. Will they go for it on fourth down when we return here to Nashville? From halftime report just minutes away, Kevin Nagani, Booger McFarland, and Dan Orlovsky. Welcome Strong starts so far for <laughs> Michigan, Oklahoma, and primetime Colorado. 85 new players, 21 point underdogs. Defensively, they're playing great. Offensively, led by Shadur Sanders, outstanding. Highlights coming your way. Joe Milton showing some flashes of that arm strength so gonna far. It's going to be some misses, but it's going to be a lot of fun, just like last year for Tennessee. If you got somebody open and Joe will find you, got to hold on and catch <laughs> the ball, right? That's what the quarterback says. Back to you, Tess. Look forward to the halftime report as Virginia is going to put Will Betridge out there to attempt a 30-yard field goal. And Betridge puts it through to get the Hoos on the board for the first time this season from 30 yards. We told you Will Betridge is wearing that number 41 to honor Deshaun Perry, who was one of the three players tragically lost last November 13th. Betridge and Perry went to Gulver Prep in Miami together in high school before becoming teammates at UVA. Well, it was, it was the best Virginia's offense looked on the drive, right? We saw a big couple big completions down the field, and you cap it off. You put some points on the board, so trying to build some confidence and momentum going into halftime. Now the pressure falls squarely on Virginia's defense here with a little bit under two minutes to play. You know how fast Tennessee can go. It doesn't take them long to score touchdowns. That's well documented. They need one more stop. We've seen a lot of good plays on defense for Virginia in this one so far. This is a big moment, though. They do not want to head in 21-3. to Well, that's the conversation you and I were having during the commercial break. Listen, you know who you're playing. Obviously, you're playing a team that was the number one scoring offense in the country last year. Tennessee, in an instant, can just do that. You just, put three up, and they can put seven up I, 60 seconds later. I, against this offense in Tennessee, I just don't think threes are going to get it done. Matt Ganyard. The 34-year-old who served in the U.S. Marine Corps, who was a longtime Who's fan, and then accepted and enrolled at the Darden School of Business. So one of the very top graduate schools in the world is producing your 34-year-old walk-on kickoff specialist. And now he's oh. even looking to have a little, he's got a little something to him, Jess. He's like, I'm 34, I've been waiting for this moment. He, Katie? He was gonna <laughs> fight, and then he congratulated him. He gave him a little tap on the shoulder. He's a gentleman. You know, Tess, uh, Tony Elliott thought it was a joke when his special teams analyst came to him and said, hey, we've got this 34-year-old UVA alum who thinks he can come out and kick for the team as a walk-on. We just got to get a waiver. And Tony Elliott was like, are you guys pulling my leg? Like, is this a myth? Am I ever going to meet this guy? Finally, he met him, and he said, I think he'd be a great fit for our locker room. Then he heard the ball come off of his foot in practice, and he said, I haven't heard a sound like that in a long, long time. They love having him in the locker room. The team has really responded to him. They just don't get his wedding singer references in the locker room. <laughs> Here is Jalen Wright. Jalen Wright patiently finding that hole and then bursting ahead for Remember, 12. This offense scored 55% of their touchdowns last year in two minutes or less. It does not take them long. They can get it done throwing and running. 55% in under two minutes. Milton on the read, keeps it. High knees, strides ahead for nine yards. Michael Diata ends up making the tackle. I mean, when you're going three plays a minute, I mean, it's amazing how quickly they get set up. They get the call in, they communicate it, and go. Milton, second and one. And he's able to connect with Keaton. And just like you said, Jesse, they can do it instantly. And they practice at this pace, and it's really nice to see Keaton. A great job there in awareness, in a two-minute situation. Catch the ball, where's the sidelines, let me get out of bounds and save some clock. 65 seconds remain in this half. Right again. Goes ahead for 13 more yards. Following John Campbell, the transfer from Miami, a left tackle. Nice job pulling to the inside. There was a massive hole to run through right there. And just like that, they're knocking on the door. Milton, play action. To the outside, another completion. Drew McCoy. 48 seconds remain, three timeouts for Tennessee. Here's Will Campbell here, he's gonna pull around, and this isn't just a zone inside between the tackle running scheme. They've got big dudes that can, that can move as well on this offensive line. There's a lot you have to handle and deal with right now if you're Virginia's front seven. Tennessee already to the Virginia 20 yard line. Jalen Wright, 
as he goes ahead for another first down. Just goes to show you, Tess, they didn't even get down there throwing posts and go routes right. and seam routes. That, you know, they, they, they run the ball, they throw it short, guys know to get out of bounds, you save clock. This is something they practice day in and day out back in Knoxville, and it shows up on game day. And by the way, the new clock rule, the clock no longer stopped out of first down, not inside of two minutes. So we're back to the old rules at this point. Jalen Wright. He has been an engine on this drive. That time it was the right tackle point. It was Gerald Mincy. It was the same play we saw earlier. It was a timeout called. The Tennessee in phenomenal field position here about the seven-yard line. So again, we're talking about all the different ways they're running the football. This time it's Mincy coming inside. He played left tackle last year, but because they lost Darnell right to the draft, they moved him over inside as well. Great job climbing into the second level and getting a block. And you're seeing Tennessee start to assert themselves a little bit running the football. They've been the more physical unit in the trenches. And how about seeing Gerald Mincy from the backside? How about at 6'6", 340 pounds, how much that 5-4 and four on his jersey just stretches to the side? And he's their backup right tackle, right. too, by just the way. I mean, tempo affects everybody in this offense, right? It's not just receivers and running backs that are substituting. They're bringing in fresh offensive linemen as well. That's like a road grader coming down at you. Jabari Small now in the backfield. 21 seconds before halftime, but two timeouts for Tennessee as they have come right down the field after the field goal decision by UVA. Small to the edge. Small reaching out to the end zone. Touchdown, Tennessee! An eight-yard touchdown run. They'll take a look at it. But Jabari Small with that effort at the end. Well, he's using his speed, bouncing it outside, slips a tackle, he starts to go down to the knee, stay off the... Right there. A knee goes down. Where is the football in relation to the goal line? There it looks like he's short to me, Tess. It was a touchdown. The previous play is under further review. When the knee goes down, I don't think the football had started to break the plane yet. I think that's going to be a little bit short when they take a look at this. Play's officially under review. It's the first review that we've had this afternoon. Of course, it's been ruled a touchdown on the field, so when they take a look at it, you need indisputable video evidence to overturn it. It's a fantastic effort getting to the outside. You know, it's funny. We've seen some of these Tennessee backs tripping on this new surface, yes. and they look like he might have started slipping himself. But right there when the knee is down, his elbow is also about to touch. Doesn't look to me like the football's breaking the plane, Joe. In terms of where the knee was at that moment, you mentioned the field, as Katie gave us the report, right here at Nissan Stadium. They're no longer using the typical black rubber pellets. It's coconut fiber. So new turf, new action coming off of it. As this extra effort right there, you see the knee. Now, we did give you the down-the-line shot before. That is why Jesse is making his verdict known. And here it is from Pylon Cam. Need a zoom. Uh, okay. Jesse, you asked for the zoom. After Here it comes. View, the player was down before he broke the plane at the half-yard line. It will be first and goal at that spot, the half-yard line. Game clock operator, please reset the game clock to 17 seconds, and it will start on my ready for play. On behalf of all college football fans around America, thank you for efforting the zoom right. on the pylon cam. Asking you shall receive. You guys get things done around here. That's it. I appreciate Welcome it. Welcome to the crew. Yeah. So this will end up being the ninth play of the drive for Tennessee, where they have come down with precision against this. Remember, it was, it was these defense. situations a year ago. Princeton fan, the tight yes. end, was a running back they could use. What does Josh Heupel have dialed up here? He's got Tyree West, a D lineman, right now playing fullback in the backfield. With Small, and of course his big quarterback, Joe Milton, and with a whole lot of humanity, they go right in. <laughs> It looked like they had 325 pounds Javante Spragans back there. And they also had Tyree West, the big D tackle, just pushing a 240-pound quarterback as if he needed it. And we talked about it, Joe, earlier. Virginia's decision to kick a field goal, right? Knowing that Tennessee could just drive down the field quickly and score. And they've done that. 
And they had a fourth down, and we sat back and we said, listen, you know who you're playing. You're playing the team that led the nation in scoring. Threes are probably not going to win for you, but look at, look at this. Right look here. at this. Like, like, that's just like 700 pounds behind a 240-pounder. Javante Spragans in the backfield. He weighs 325 pounds, and they put a defensive tackle and, and in the backfield. The quarterback, Joe, I would hate that, too. Like, like you're already going to get it from the front. Right, right. Yes. I don't need 700 pounds <laughs> behind me also. Like, that's just... Way too much. So Charles Campbell out for the extra point again. As he taps on his third of the afternoon. But all the humanity, we said Tyree West, the defensive lineman, Spragans, the offensive lineman, and then Joe Milton goes 240. Man, just no shot. Again, look at the surge, too, and the push on that Tennessee offensive line from the right side. Loving it. I think Davis loves it, too. Jess, you mentioned it. We're sitting there. We're looking up at the clock. There was a minute 42 to play in a half. Minute 42. It's 14-3. With two timeouts in your back pocket, that's an eternity. Drive went nine plays, 75 yards, minute 36. And it didn't look like they broke a sweat, right? There never seemed to be. There's a sense of urgency, obviously, with them, but there's no panic the way you see sometimes with some offenses when they're in those two-minute situations. That, that's just because it's their everyday tempo. That's just what they do. It's two-minute all the time. Rocky Top filling up Nissan Stadium as they come just a few hours west to enjoy the opening Saturday of week one of college football. Turbyville will just sky this easily in the final seconds of this first half. First half that saw Joe Milton and the offense come right down the field. Sampson had the nine-yard touchdown catch, and Sampson also added a touchdown run. There were a lot of miscues in the middle ground of this first half where Tennessee had some missed opportunities. But they seem to have gotten it right. kind of back and established. A big part of that was Joe Milton, a lot more accurate, good decision-making, throwing it, but they've been running the football so well offensively. I think you feel good if you're Josh Scheipel and this offense heading into halftime. Now, if you're Virginia, you're going to get the ball back first in the second right. half. You had your best drive of the game the last time out. You are going to have to answer, though, because right now Tennessee doesn't look like they can be stopped. Uh, Tennessee team that has high expectations, even replacing the 10th pick in the draft at right tackle, the Bolitnikoff winner at receiver, and the SEC Offensive Player of the Year. They go right back out there, and even though it was choppy, 21 points on the board, an 18-point lead. For the Vols, number 12 team in the country, Josh Heupel's team. Last year, 11 wins, Orange Bowl champs. Good recruiting, did well in the transfer portal, and right back into contention to start this year, up 21-3 to at the half. Let's go to Katie. Thanks, Tess. Coach Heupel, you started hot, you finished hot. How would you describe your offensive play so far? Well, first of all, defensively, I thought an unbelievable performance by them in the first half. They were on the wrong side of the 50 a bunch, uh, you know, off of some uh, execution issues on special teams and on offense. Thought they handled themselves extremely well in those sudden change situations. Uh, offensively, just a little bit off at times in the middle. We got to get into a flow and uh, special teams, some things we got to clean up too. But all in all, 21-3, we'll take it. We need to come back and play better in the second half. Thank you for the time. Thank you. He will take it. His quarterback, Joe Milton, 134 yards and the touchdown. And it came down at the end to make it 21-3. to State Farm halftime report is still to come after these messages and a word from our ABC stations. You're with us as we welcome you back to ESPN College Football, presented by Gillette Labs. Joe Tessitore, Jesse Palmer, Katie George with you. Week one and Tennessee, that high-flying offense, but with a pretty good-looking defense against Virginia with a 21 to three lead and Jesse the Virginia offensive line has really struggled against that Tennessee front yeah they're very athletic they're very physical up front they're moving around they're giving them a lot of problems this defense they came to play they've been aggressive and they want to make Virginia one-dimensional they've done that by stopping the run number one only minus eight rushing yards so far they have been living in Virginia's backfield too deep too much athleticism has put them in third and long situations they haven't been able to protect Tony he must consider this only one half of football already eight tackles for loss so it's going to be simple for Virginia to come back in this game 
Tony Musket's going to have to throw the football. The question is, can you do it under duress, throwing into very small windows? It's a huge task in Tony Musket's first game here at the FBS level. Yeah, a guy who was playing in the Big South Conference a year ago and now stepping up to this top-level, top-12 team as the kick goes out. That brings about the flag. That gives us a chance to check in with Katie. Yeah, Tess, I spoke with Tony Elliott. He was pleased to get points on the board just before half, so he wants to find that offensive rhythm again here at the start. But he said, look, guys, we took their best shot, and we're still standing. Anything can happen. He said, this is a half about our culture. Are we going to lay it on the line for the next 30 minutes? That's what he wants to see from this group. Yeah, Katie, I really like what I'm seeing from Tony Musket from a leadership standpoint, too, because we know he's been getting hit a lot early in this game, but he's battling. He's out there. He's competing. We saw an outstanding drive their last time out on the field and I just love the way that he's responding to this atmosphere I think he's he's gaining a lot of value and trust and confidence from his teammates because of the way he's playing Musket opening throw the second half was trying to connect with Malachi Fields Kamal Hatton had coverage Joe one of the reasons why I think he's going to fit into what Tony Elliott wants to do he's really good at throwing back shoulder throws that showed up on film at Monmouth this is perfectly thrown to Malachi Fields and that's the play the 6-4 receiver has to come back and get Kamal Hatton's turned around gets his hands up but I think that's a play that Fields could have made you think back to Tony Elliott's great offenses at Clemson yep. Deshaun Watson and Trevor Lawrence all the back shoulder throws to big tall wide receivers it's got to be a big part of what Virginia does too and Fields is 6'4 220 and he fits that mold perfectly Wilson by the way 6'4 220 number 17 as well so they have a couple of those down receivers second down throw it falls harmlessly to the turf it'll make for a third and ten and this is really the down and distance that's given them fits yeah because all of a sudden now here comes the cheetah package look at Tennessee the big bodies go out the fast dudes come in Tyler Barron, number nine, he works his way to the inside. They have not been able to block James Pierce when he's been lined up outside. Now he's on the left side of the formation for Tennessee. He's got two sacks in this game. He was doing it working to right tackle. They've got to help out versus him. UVA is just one of eight on third down. This is third and ten. Musket looking left. Pressure coming after him, and they get to him again. As Tyler Barron comes up with the sack of Tony Musket, and that is the third sack of the afternoon for the ball. It's a game inside by Tennessee. We talked about them slanting. It's Amari Thomas. He's working this way. Here's Tyler Barron working the other way. And Virginia just having issues. They're not very big on the inside of the line, but unfortunately, Tony Musket just doesn't have a chance. He has no opportunity to work through any of those progressions. I told you earlier in games, watching him play at Monmouth, Joe, when he gets hit, the eyes tend to come down. You know, how is that going to show itself throughout the rest of this game? It's now six three and outs for UVA. Fair catch at the 23. For the most part, Joe, I've been impressed with what I've seen from Joe Milton in this game, too, right? And he had one bad drive where he had three straight incompletions. He looked a little bit off. This was the most egregious of the three. But for the most part, he's been pretty good. This ball a little bit underthrown, maybe. Nice job by Keaton coming back. But let's be honest. At this point, he should have over 200 yards passing and two scores because Keaton dropped that one right there. I think he's been in rhythm. I like the decision-making. He's always been going the right place with the football. Nice job working through his progressions on that touchdown to Sampson there. And his last two drives, he's led him to TDs. He's, he's feeling the rhythm. He's feeling the flow right now. Fifth start of his Tennessee career, coming off that Orange Bowl MVP performance as he shuffles it ahead to Wright, who somehow is able to spin free before he is finally driven back as Jonas Sanker and James Jackson were able to get to him. We go back and kind of look at the air yards in the first half. A lot of it underneath. Virginia obviously very aware of the speed they have at receiver, and they're giving him a lot of cushion. Look at this run by Wright on second and eight. As he hits the hole hard on the left side, Sanker has to come up with the tackle. You know, watching, down. watching Wright, Joe, throughout his career, hasn't he gotten so much better running between the tackles? Yes, he has. He was a guy early on. He wanted to bounce everything to the outside. It's not high school, though, now. Right? you got to get what you can get. He's done a good job of seeing the crease, putting his foot in there. As he does here, Jesse... And that crease gets him out to midfield. And Jesse, he said, listen, I'm different. My mindset, my weight, the way I run, he feels he's more physical and yet more elusive. Yeah, and it's it's being patient, too. It's right. It's letting block set up. you got a tight end who's going to go get a linebacker. you got to give that play an opportunity to develop. 
Milton, look at the time he has to choose an option, and he does so in squirrel white for another first down. And now this is the rhythm we typically see with Tennessee. It is, and they're going back to the route concept that Josh Heupel loves. It's a dig route from the outside receiver and a wheel that converts on the inside to a comeback. And right now, Virginia doesn't have an answer for it. It really compromises the safety as they go to squirrel white again, but good defensive pursuit down the line as he was torn down. Tennessee now substituting, bringing on a new back that's Dylan Sampson, which gives Virginia's D-line an opportunity to bring some fresh bodies in, but they're losing their best player right now, Faumui at D-tackle, coming out of the game. You just wonder how much of this tempo is starting to wear on Virginia's defense and how much gas are they going to have left in the tank here? Second and nine. Quickly to Squirrel White again. Splits defenders. Look at the little squirrel go. This is a guy who got clocked running 23.4 miles per hour. You don't necessarily have to block everybody. That time out in an island with the Iowa State transfer, Tavon Kyle, and he just makes a miss. You're going to see here, block inside, you go do the rest in space. Again, back to Squirrel. He is so shifty. Remember of last year, the Orange Bowl, he had nine catches for 108 yards and a touchdown in an Orange Bowl. He's staying down on the turf here at the end of this play. Well, that was a game. Remember, he was a true freshman in yes. this game, too, Joe. And you wonder how, what that did for his confidence coming in this year. He's, you see him down right now. You certainly hope he's okay. He's a big part of what this offense is going to be. He's kind of the move guy for Josh Heupel, right? He's the one guy that they can line up at running back. They can put him in the slot. They can put him at the H wing spot. And he's definitely a weapon. That's the last thing Tennessee fans want to see. We hope Squirrel White get up soon as he's tended to by the medical staff and take a quick break. Hey, coming up tonight, after the Alabama game, playing Middle Tennessee, SEC football final. you got Dari, C.D., Benjamin Watson. They're going to take you through the biggest stories of the day, break down all the analysis on the SEC network. That's a must-watch for me, by the way. I love that show. I'm, I'm excited to watch Alabama, too. I think you and I will have a chance to watch that together. Jalen Milrow Mil named the starter with think? his legs. Well, you know, in, in a new offense, right? Tommy Reese, the new play caller coming over from Notre Dame. So a lot of question marks, but excited to see what that looks like. 21-3, Tennessee on top of Virginia. Milton pumps. Milton strike inside the five and complete to Brew McCoy, the transfer from USC, who was Tennessee's second leading receiver wow. last year. That, Flag was, down. that was a small window to throw in. There was three defenders that Joe Milton had to put that football through, and that howitzer for an arm, he was able to do it. Targeting number three on the defense. That play is under further review. Let's take a look at the penalty against Lex Long. Well, as Brew McCoy is coming over the middle of the field, you're looking for contact that's made to the head or neck area of a defenseless player. And certainly, Brew McCoy is that as a receiver and not yet in a position to protect himself. It's got to be forcible contact to the head or neck area. And they look for indicators on these types of plays, a launch, crouch. You see there, it does that did look like it was a helmet that made contact with the helmet. I think the question what they're going to be looking back on this too is, was it the right shoulder maybe hitting the shoulder of Brew McCoy first? This isn't so clean. Or a forcible contact to the head or neck That's area. There is no targeting. It'll be first and goal, Tennessee. Well, let's bring in our rules expert, Matt Austin, to clean it up. What do you think, Matt? Yeah, that's a great job by replay for a couple different reasons. One, the player doing the hitting, I think he's absorbing the hit more than attacking. So I don't think there's an attack. And he did everything he could to get his head out of the way and hit with the shoulder pad. If the heads might have clicked, maybe. But I think that's a good no call. Yeah, I'm with you. Good clean play in the back end. Let's not tell you, he's had a, he's had a good game so far. That's He's a guy been that very they active. He has been. Very active. They need him. First and goal, Dylan Sampson in the backfield. And Dylan Sampson is taken down right at the line of scrimmage as Jameer Carter was in on the play, along with Paul Akire. You know, to me, I, I, I don't even overthink this. Just turn around and do it again quickly or let this 240-pound quarterback keep it. Milton. He's going to stride right in. Joe Milton. 
with a rushing touchdown. That's his second rushing touchdown today. Of course, everybody anticipating the handoff inside. They just needed to freeze Devin Harrard just quickly on the perimeter. And, and big number seven for Tennessee, he can motor. And all of a sudden now, three TDs in their last three drives, Joe. It just feels like, this looks like last year's Tennessee offense. Of course, last year's Tennessee offense was an offense that at one point put a number one next to their name. Remember, the Vols were number one when the CFP rankings first came out. Their offense was number one the whole way. And now they're keeping that pace, showing it off with a 10-play, 77-yard drive as Milton gets his second rushing touchdown of the afternoon. ABC College Football, presented by Gillette Labs, is brought to you by Ram Trucks, America's best light-duty pickup for new vehicle quality. Week one of college football here in Music City. Uh, Taylor Swift. Taylor Swift was at Nissan back in May. She played this stadium. 212,000 people came over three nights. Have you been to the Aero Store? Are, are you a Swifty? I don't know how to answer that. Okay. that one way or the other, that's uh, not going to Listen, if you are, I, I give you props. Listen, I read... Do you want me to go through the set list with you? I, 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 I read she's going to make over a billion dollars. That's with a B? With a B. The first ever, apparently. So, you know, so I want, so it, it's a good coming. thing to be a Swifty. Twenty-eight to three, Tennessee. As you know, we've noted, Nissan Stadium. It, this is like just a home game moved west as we look at the Taco Bell Live Moss student section. All season long, student sections across the country are competing to be the Taco Bell Live Moss student section of the year. You can download the Taco Bell app to learn more. Joe, it feels like it's what 85, 15. Mm -hmm. Tennessee fans here. I may even bump like, that to 90. <laughs> I may bump that. It's it's very orange. Like Tennessee orange. Man, when they are good, oh, things boy. are different in the yeah. sport. I, I feel like, right? yeah, I feel like college football is better when the ball is When you good. got that checkerboard rocking, here's Kobe Pace. Kobe Pace, the transfer from Clemson. He had some good moments at Clemson, Jess. Remember, Wake Forest was number 13 in, in the country back in 21, and Pace was run, ran for almost 200 yards. Yeah, two years ago in the ACC, he was second in the conference, averaging 6.2 yards a carry. He has a chance to be a weapon in this offense. He was the guy, by the way, that forced the fumble on the punt return earlier in this game. So making a bit of an impact, not just carrying, it, but on special teams too. Second and seven. Tony Musket. Oh, oh, that ball is on the ground. It's live. It's scooped. They're blowing dead. They're, they are blowing that dead. Is that a forward pass? That could be a forward pass. I think. I think so too. Man, that's like the Geno Smith, the Tavon Austin play that Dana Holgerson used to run at West Virginia. Wow. But Tyler Barron is saying, "Oh my glory moment! I had it." Oh. Of course, the little tap pass. The tap yeah, pass is still a it, forward pass. Let's see. It is. Yeah, that's a forward pass, yeah, technically. Yeah. Listen, and here's the thing. For quarterbacks love that play because when that guy runs 80 yards for a touchdown, that's an 80-yard touchdown pass. Lucky. But that's also the benefit to that is that is not a live ball yeah. if there's a mishandle. Third and seven. Barron saying what could have been. This is going to be a fight for the sticks for Malik Washington. Well, He's going to be half a yard short. And because of the pressure Tony Musk gets under, they don't have time to run anything very deep down the field. You see how quickly that ball came out? Yeah. I mean, he's just got to get rid of it and trust that Washington's going to be able to make a catch and turn it upfield. Fourth down, you got to go here. Fourth and one. Oh, boy. Musket wrapped up. A tackle for loss as it was Wesley Walker with the tackle on fourth down. That, that is, is the ninth TFL of the day and for Tennessee. And it's perfect zone read defense by Tennessee. You got one guy taking the running back. He's replaced in the defense from the secondary level by Wesley Walker. He just couldn't do it better. He's going this way. He's taking that. Quarterback's going to come this way. I've got that. No problem. That is exactly how you draw this up defensively. 
I tell you, you have got to be impressed with Tennessee on defense. I am. Tim Banks, their defensive coordinator, he had these guys ready to play. Their physicality stopping the run, their speed everywhere. They took a huge step last year in improvement. It looks like they've taken another one this season. And now with the short field, Jabari Small will take it ahead to the 25-yard line. I think that's one of the big reasons why there are people pretty optimistic about Tennessee, even after losing a Hendon Hooker, sure. Jalen Hyatt, and Darnell Wright. If the defense plays better, it gives them a real opportunity. And then you got this running back duo. We've seen Jalen Wright and Jabari Small. We've seen Dylan Sampson come yeah. in, score a couple touchdowns. They're loaded. Touchdown reception. No, they're touchdown. loaded. And, and listen, Joey Hazley was, was telling me, or Halsey was telling me that you know, we're going to do this thing 40-40-20 with respect to carries, but somebody, somebody gets the hot hand, that's going to be the guy we ride. And, and right now, they've got three very capable dudes back there. John Wright already has 114 yards rushing, and now Jabari Small is getting his chance as he goes ahead. He's inside the 10, and it's going to be first and goal ball. Well, it's the offensive line. That time, their right guards, Braggins, did a great job chipping off the D tackle, climbing into the second level. They are gashing Virginia's defense right now. First and goal, small, and tripped up, only gains about a half a yard. It'll be second and goal from the five. Well, and they've scored four touchdowns on five red zone possessions in this game, Joe, because the best red zone offenses are the ones that run the ball the yes. best, right? It's hard to throw down here. The windows are tiny. Tennessee, they're getting it done on the ground. And Joe Milton will look over. He'll really take his time. And three different colors as they call in the signals. And Josh Heupel walks his way down towards his quarterback. Second and goal. Small. Tries to get that pad leverage at the end, but is stacked up at the two-yard line. I like the call there by John Wodzinski, the defensive coordinator for Virginia, anticipating potential zone read off the right side. They waited down on that last drive, so they bring the safety to the open side of the field, forcing... The quarterback to hand it off, and you just saw the pursuit. It was a good call in a big moment. Can they do it again? And Jalen Wright comes, in, excuse me, Sampson comes into the game here on third and goal. They're one of seven on third downs. Because of the sub, though, look at this. Yep. The referee has to stop the, the play to allow Virginia the opportunity to get fresh bodies, and a lot of big dudes now jogging out there. Yeah, Falmui and Carter, their best defensive tackles, come in on third and goal. The pitch. Sampson scores again. Dylan Sampson is finding the end zone with ease this afternoon. Yeah. His third touchdown today, his second rushing. Yeah, they, they caught Virginia sleeping a little bit here. Langston Long was at the linebacker position. He was trying to communicate something to his teammate. You're going to see him right here. He's talking, right? They're going to bring this guy in motion, and he's just going to be too late. Getting off to the outside. You see how his head was turned there? And then that allowed the lineman, Campbell, to get up on him. And yeah, this tempo and communication in its first game is so much stuff having to go on. It's just so much to have to handle defensively. We're seeing it play out. Short Tennessee takes over with the short field. Didn't waste any time. Two minutes and 28 second drive coverage, just six plays in cap with Dylan Sampson's third touchdown of the day. It is 35 to 3 for the 12th ranked balls. Beautiful Nashville, Tennessee. Titans will play their home opener here in two weeks against the Chargers. Right now, it is the State University in action. 12th ranked Vols, Tennessee, a 35 to 3 on Virginia. Katie? You know, Tess, Joe Milton was a counselor at the Manning Passing Academy this past summer, and Peyton Manning told me his commitment to helping and teaching the young quarterbacks reminded him of Josh Allen, Patrick Mahomes, and Bryce Young. Pretty good company. He said that was the starting point. But once he watched him work out, this was his assessment. He said his arm is special. It's unique. It's impressive. But I think Joe has really worked hard to be more than just some guy with a great arm. He 
He's worked really hard on his accuracy, his footwork. Winning the Orange Bowl and beating a team like Clemson can give you a lot of confidence. So I think Joe is going to use that. He's a fun guy to be around. His teammates play hard for him. And as you guys have seen today, they certainly run hard for him, too. That has been critical to the success of his Tennessee offense. Paris Jones is running hard for UVA as he goes for 11 yards on a first down. But just to get back to Tony, to uh, Joe Milton, yeah. Jesse. Yeah. You know, we could talk about the arm and strength all day long. That's the eye candy. Yeah. That's what gets everybody excited. Yeah. A lot of the conversation this week has been about him understanding the why, the right. concepts of an offense. Yeah, and it, it's really kind of coming through. You understand why play calls are made, what we're looking for against different coverages, which route concepts work the best, and understanding the process that goes through a play caller's mind, too. It's the second time, by the way, they've rolled the ball back to Tony Musket in the shotgun snap. But going back to that, too, because, listen, coordinators, play callers, and quarterbacks got to be on the same page. They have to be on the same wavelength, right? You understand what Joe Milton likes, what he doesn't like. You have respect for each other, and you have an open path of communication to talk about the things you like in the playbook and don't. This is only his ninth start in five years. They're still learning about Joe Milton, but when you look at the talent and his desire to be good and be really great in this offense, things could be special if he's able to be consistent. Second and eight, Pace bounces it off left tackle and then is just tripped up just before he could fully turn the corner by Warren Burrell. This is going to be a really big key for Virginia and, and whether or not they win this game and come back, as the season progresses, they have to run the football. It was something they couldn't do a year ago in Tony Elliott's first season. They need to be able to have some bounce and take pressure off of Tony Musket. And so far, you're looking on this drive, and you're seeing a couple of positives here. They've got some talented running backs, and this is the best the offensive line has looked at the point of attack so far in this game. Just two rushing yards on the day because they struggled with all the TFLs in the first half. Third and five. Musket back to pass, steps up in the pocket, wow. and drills it complete to Malachi Fields. Good throw by Tony Musket to a very big receiver. And it's the first time in a long time he's actually had a pocket and time to throw. Look at this. He's able to get his eyes downfield. I mean, works through his progression very quickly, delivers it accurately, throws the football with conviction. I mean, that's what you want your pass attack to look like. So kudos to the offensive line. Let's give him some credit. A couple good runs, and they're by far the best job they've done in pass pro. goes ahead for three yards. Well, kind of that, bringing that physicality, too. I mean, there's no hesitation there. It's Pace just seeing a crease, putting his foot down and getting north. Hey, just to get back to Tony Musket a little bit, I mean, this is a guy, he goes and plays at Monmouth and then transfers back. And he's okay, he's an ACC starting quarterback right away. You, when you watched the film, you said to me this week, you go, listen, he was under-recruited. Bottom line. No, he didn't he, belong. He slipped through the cracks. At Coastal Carolina, the only offer he got coming out of high school, and he's got a chip on his shoulder. He wants to prove to everybody that he belongs, but there's no doubt in my mind from a physical standpoint, he's good enough to help this team compete in the ACC. Second and eight, Kobe Pace splitting Tennessee defenders down to the 20-yard line. And they're finding something now on the left side of this offensive line. Just great job in zone blocking, and it's 55 right here. They're going to get pushed and get up into second level. It's about moving players up front and then climbing. You see that where he gets in the second level? That's big. In the inside zone game, they were not able to do that a year ago, but they feel like they're more athletic on the O-line this year. You're seeing some of it. Pace again after that 22-yard run. Jesse, that was only their second play that was over 20 yards today. Yeah. It's, uh, listen, at this point right now, it's, it's a learning process. There's so much newness on this offense coming into the year. You lose 80% of your production from a season ago, a new quarterback, four new receivers, four new offensive linemen. You know, th their identity is something that's going to establish itself. But I love what I'm seeing on this drive from Virginia because being physical is something that they want to take pride in. That's, that's a part, running the ball is something that they want to be able to do successfully this year. Amari Thomas, Big O, the starting defensive tackle is down at the end of that play and we'll be back in eight seconds now a look from ram trucks ram trucks built to serve joe tessitore jesse palmer katie george with you here at nissan stadium where tennessee 
after some choppy moments in the first half showing exactly what we thought that they were offensively and up 35 to 3 that's big O Omari Thomas is the locker room vocal leader and has been a force today being disruptive in the middle of that defensive line and now it's a good sign that the trainer is able to get him to his feet and walk off to the sideline I don't think Tennessee's defense is used to getting pushed around the way they are right now in this drive either up mm -hmm. front I mean they're getting moved backwards which we haven't seen up to this point in this game Virginia keeps running it to the left side they're running these zone schemes around that left corner It'll be interesting to see if Tennessee does anything here defensively to try to adjust and counter that Second and seven for the Hoos. Jones able to get free inside the 10 and into the end zone. Paris Jones. Six year player from Alexandria, Virginia. And a great individual effort because Paris Jones essentially makes three guys miss on this play. He's not very big, 5'7", 178. They're going to work left. Watch. He'll get two guys here in the backfield. One, two. Puts his foot in the ground. There's three in the end zone. We talked about it, Joe. They're talented at the running back position. They, they go like three, four deep, but last year they just weren't able to show that off. That's the best I've seen Virginia run the ball in two years. Paris Jones, you, you mentioned he's 5'7", 179, but he is a force in the weight room. They say pound for pound, the strongest guy by far on the team. Big Noah Josie, their left guard, climbing up in the second level, but really it's Perry and his ability and quickness in the open field and building some confidence here, creating and establishing an identity right before your eyes. Katie. Paris, Paris Jones' reason for returning to play in his sixth year, it's pretty powerful, guys. He said one thing they all had in common, the three teammates that passed away, they left everything they had on the field every time they stepped on it. Jones said, I couldn't honestly look myself in the mirror and say, that I did the same last season. They would have given everything they had, and I can't walk away until I've done that. I have a debt to pay, and I plan on paying it, and that touchdown is a start. Nice, w nice, nice way to honor Devin Lavelle and Deshaun, and he's the roommate to Mike Hollins, the heroic survivor of the tragic shooting, and he calls his roommate a superhero when you ask about him. Down 25 right now, but all of a sudden you look at the Virginia sideline, Joe, they've got some juice. Dudes are bouncing around a little bit, but it's total team football. Their defense can get the ball back here quickly. Still got some time left. 35 to 10, let's go to the studio and Kevin. Tess, let's go back to Fort Worth, Colorado. Stars stepping up, Shador Sanders, the true freshman, Dylan Edwards, and bye-bye, Dan. Absolute electricity, this young man. Get the football in his hands, you see the little screen pass out to the right. The evasiveness in the open field, and then he runs away from everybody on TCU's defense. 75 yards of the house, and then how about this pick by Travis Hunter? How about Travis Hunter coming off the pick, and also Kev, the play before, he tracked the ball carrier down 75 yards to save a touchdown. Buffalo's up by three in the third, Tess. You see that athleticism of Travis Hunter. Hunter, by the way, also has eight catches for 53 yards Man. in that game. 24 wow. to 21, Colorado. Now screen to Dante Thornton. Dante Thornton, who really is one of the breakout stars of fall camp. He's got incredible size and speed. Yeah, normally guys his size don't catch screens. <laughs> right, <laughs> exactly. Quick with the ball. It's pretty scary. There's right as he is met at the line of scrimmage by Butler. You know, and keep in mind, Jalen Hyatt, who was a unanimous All-American, who went for over 1,200 yards. Cedric Tillman, who was a third-round draft pick by Cleveland. They're at the door, and yet you look at this receiver room, and you're wild. Uh, I think by the end of the year, they have a chance to be in the conversation as one of the best units in the entire country. They are talented. Third and four. That was broken up as Sanker was there defensively I'll tell you. all right joe so listen virginia goes down the field they run the ball they have success they score a touchdown defense takes the field three and out virginia fans now in the stadium they're reacting they're responding the players on the sidelines as well momentum's a real thing in college football let's just see what happens 
Jackson Ross, a big redshirt freshman from Australia, on to punt away. See if Davies can get a good return as Ross rolls out. And that coverage unit able to get downfield. You know what's crazy about this punter, by the way? He's, he's ambidextrous. He's punted in this yes. with his right and left leg. Yeah. <laughs> Who does that? So Tony Musket, the new quarterback for UVA, and he comes from Monmouth. So he was a two-time first-team All-Big South. And Jesse, you spent the last weeks scouring FCS film. I enjoyed watching it, though, Joe, because I'm a big fan of Tony Musket. He jumps off the film. He jumps off the screen, and he's got abilities. You see that physically. I've been impressed with his leadership in this game. He has battled. He, he's been under a lot of duress, and I know there's a lot of people wondering. He's, he's filling massive shoes. Brennan Armstrong is the school's all-time leading pass. That's who he's taking over for, but so far, I've been impressed. He goes to Jones again. Brandon Armstrong, who was a three-year starter at UVA, transferred to NC State. We were watching the air night. Went for 96 yards and a couple of rushing touchdowns in the win against UConn. Virginia right now running the ball. You know what they're doing a good job of? They're What's just that? getting hats on hats. Yeah. They're covering guys up. Last year, you saw guys running free on defense. Running backs had no shot. You don't have to necessarily blow anybody off the line of scrimmage in a zone play. You just cover people up and give your running backs opportunities to find creases. Low snap, able to get it to Jones, looking to turn the corner, but he is met and wrestled down by Omar Norman Lott, the transfer from Arizona State. He's made an impact in this game. His athleticism has, has been key. And talking to Josh Eipel this week, he told me that dude is twitched up, and you might see it here on third down now. The dreaded third and long, medium to long. But Elliott said, he goes, we got to get out of the obvious dropback game because Tennessee, they just blitz so much, and here it is, the obvious dropback game. And honestly, they haven't had to blitz a lot in this game to get pressure on Tony Musket. They're front four. They've been doing a lot of damage by themselves. Third down and six. Musket, four-man rush, lofts it, and that was nearly picked off as they were looking for the back shoulder, but it went a little long, and... Hadden had a chance at it. Yeah, I just don't know if Malachi Fields and his quarterback were on the same page there. It looked like Malachi Fields was running a curl route, and Musket thought he was going to keep running down the boundary. You'll see Fields up top now. Musket thinks he's going. He puts his foot in the ground expecting the curl. Those are some things that you expect may happen, right? First game, a guy that didn't play a lot last year in Fields, brand-new quarterback, and it's a communication error there. That's Tyler Barron, the starting defensive end who is down and they're looking at his leg. He's a local kid from Knoxville Catholic, so everybody around the program has known him for years, and he is really a force off the edge for Tennessee. Well, he certainly is, and after losing Byron Young, who had seven sacks a year ago, of course, he was a third-round pick by the Rams. They're looking for an alpha to step up and really be that dominant force coming off the edge. And after watching almost three-quarters today, Joe, I think they've got a couple candidates they could maybe, you know, fill those shoes. Look at the size of Dante Thornton. I think he could play defensive end. <laughs> they got a couple. That's your receiver right Brew there. McCoy and Dante Thornton don't look normal for receivers. Sparks on to punt for UVA. And Williams fields it inside the 20. And Williams with a good return. D. Williams cuts it to the outside. Williams on the go. Puncher to beat. Making amends for a fumble earlier and a punt return. And you know back there, you got to make the first guy miss and let the blocks establish themselves. And that's exactly what happened on that play. As soon as he catches it, the gunner's going to miss. And now he uses that speed and crease up the middle. He's so good in the open field. Ball fans will remember he had a 73-yard punt return TD last year against Vanderbilt. you got to be careful punting to this guy. Mike Eckler, special teams coach, thrilled with that. He's an intense guy. He was a former linebacker for Bill Snyder at K-State, team captain. And he's got his special teams unit finding themselves a little bit in the second half here as D. Williams went for a 54-yard return. And at the end of that return, Michael Diata, who's a reserve defensive lineman, is holding it up. minute here 
of the third quarter. 35 to 10, Tennessee. It was a 50-yard punt officially being listed as a 55-yard return. He's rushed for a couple touchdowns. Samson's rushed for a couple touchdowns. Samson will take this off right tackle. Uh, Samson looks like he'd start a lot of programs. I agree with you. He's made plays catching the ball and running the football. And lots of speed. Great job there bouncing it to the outside. Samson continues to get the work. Driven back at the 20-yard line this time by the Hoos. And, and Butler in on the play. Virginia is changing up their front a little bit, trying to see if they can use alignment to try and slow down this rushing attack, Cam Butler's been playing a little bit off the line of scrimmage, more in a radar position, kind of in a two-point stance, floating around, trying to confuse the blocking schemes of Tennessee. Made a nice play there. It's a pretty good story, man. Six-year senior, played at Miami of Ohio, yeah. 40 straight starts. This guy's played a lot of football. He's a leader in this locker room for this football team. Looking good today. We come to the end of the third quarter. Thirty-five to ten, number twelve team in the country. One quarter to go here in Week One. ESPN College Football presented by Gillette Labs returns after this message and a word from our ABC stations. Got the Duke's Mayo Classic tonight, Jess. It is number twenty-one North Carolina against South Carolina. That is tonight at seven thirty Eastern on ABC. Yeah. What is your feeling on the whole battle over the the term, just simple term, Carolina? Carolina. I love it. I've actually called this game before in yeah. the past, and two incredible fan bases. There's a lot of emotion present, and bragging rights, no doubt. Interconference, two great quarterbacks going at it. Defenses with question marks. Going to learn a lot. Dylan Sampson, we've learned a lot about him today as he chugs ahead for another first down. Yeah, he might be petitioning for more carries down the road. I know they thought this thing might be 40-40-20. It might, it might be more than that for Sampson, though. He has made lots of plays. There is Small and Wright just watching on as he struggles to get to the line of scrimmage here. Start of the fourth quarter. Ryder with us on this magnificent day from Nashville. What a way to start. Week one here. Started off in Nashville. Amazing crowd that was here early tailgating. We showed up so early this morning. We were like, yeah, we you were know, mimosas and scrambled eggs was, at 7 a.m. It, um, it was week one. Wanted to make sure we got into the booth, got, got all situated, got the coconut shells on the field. But the crowd was here. Yeah. The Tennessee crowd's out tailgating. Oh, yeah. How early are you getting I don't here? know. I mean, they, they've been waiting a long time for this. Ever since that Orange Bowl you called last year, yeah. they, they can't wait because the expectation level, I think, is, is higher than it's been in a very long time. And it's understandable why. You got this team that's got amazing recruiting momentum. You got Josh Heupel that is so ahead of schedule with the culture change and the winning. You're coming off of an Orange Bowl win. You got Joe Milton. You got these amazing receivers. You got an upgraded defense with speed. And now a third down and nine. As to the end zone, another score, and it goes to Jacob Warren, the big tight end. Yeah, Virginia couldn't get lined up. They had a guy running out late. It was James Jackson, the linebacker, that was supposed to cover the tight end. He just got, got run across. Jacob Warren just crossed the space too easy. See right here, linebacker, he's going out late. He wasn't even looking at Joe Milton. The ball got snapped, and tight end Warren crossed his face. Jacob Warren, whose dad played for the Vols. James Warren was an offensive lineman in the early 90s. and all of a sudden you look at the box score when it comes to Tennessee. You see those total yards. They have 442 total yards to UVA's 144. Number one offense in the country a year ago. And they're making it look easy here in the second half. Milton to Warren. You're going to talk about his dad back in the early 90s playing for the Vols when we return. 
Back here in studio, let's get the update forward. Here comes TCU, Chandler Morris, the Dylan Wright, Dan. They run traffic towards Colorado's man coverage, drifts away from pressure. Dylan Wright makes a guy miss in the open field. But Dylan Edwards, the true freshman, having himself a day. Don't even block the defense being an option off of him with three blocks in front of him, Kev. Third touchdown for him. Colorado up by three, Tess. That's a thriller going on there as we welcome you back. Starling on the return. I like these commercial breaks now with you back in the booth on ABC yeah. because I can actually watch you with what you're doing with all the Bachelor commercials. Oh, yeah. And then I can be next to you talking football. Like, I can't get enough Jesse Palmer here. I just saw the, the Golden Bachelor commercial there with Gary. Who, Gary's a big Hawkeyes fan. Yeah, uh, Gary is 72 years old. Yeah. And they're scoring today. Loves football. That, yeah, that's amazing. Cade McNamara, what he's doing out there. Gary uh, is a massive Hawkeyes fan. Joe, we're taking over Thursdays this is on it. ABC between yeah. Golden Bachelor, Bachelor in Paradise. It's the most dramatic season of college football in history. So... <laughs> So Ga Gary is seeing his team score while he's looking to score. <laughs> is that what's going down? Something like that. Okay, very well. Like so you that. can tune in and find out how that finishes up. The fourth quarter for Gary come on the Golden Bachelor. First down for oh. UVA Musket. Trying to get three and not able to as Tyler Barron, who remember the medical staff was out to see him moments ago, and now he's dancing, celebrating yet another sack. Oh. And Tony Musket is down at the end of that play. Yeah. And he is wincing in pain, grabbing at his left shoulder, and then finally takes a knee. But he is in a lot of pain. And there's Anthony Calandria, the true freshman backup. Yeah, James Pierce was screaming off the edge to his left side. It forced him to step up in the pocket. Barron got to him. He's just trying to protect the football and not fumble, but you see him land on that left shoulder. Ugh. And the way he reacted, for those who have seen that specific injury before, it says a lot to see the way he reacted. So Tony must get the transfer from Mammoth, gritty quarterback, veteran guy who was just starting to gain a little momentum here in the second half with this UVA offense is going to leave the game with that injury. And in steps Anthony Calandria, the true freshman from St. Petersburg, Florida, went to Lakewood High. And really one of the big buzz moments about halfway through camp was the coaches acknowledging that Calandria, the true freshman, was pushing Tony Musket. He's got some moxie to him. He's 5'11", 180 pounds. Not the biggest in the nation, but he's really competitive and fiery. His first college football play, and he's going to pass it, and it was nearly intercepted by Jalen McCullough. Well, they're trying to get him outside the pocket and give him a throw somewhere to go to, but the windows are very small. Imagine this right now, right? True freshman coming off the bench. You're facing this kind of defense from Tim Banks that have been swarming all over the field with that D-line. Now, we talked to the folks at UVA about Anthony Calandria, and they say he's got moxie to the max. And they legitimately feel that he can do anything they want him to do. There are no limitations on him in putting him into the game, but this is a tough spot, third and 13 against this defense. Calandria, Uber. unable to complete it to the outside of Malachi Field, so the punt team will trot on out. And you got to remember, Jay Wolfolk was a backup quarterback last season. He decided to play baseball. That's right. So, really, I mean, that's why they're having a turn at this point to Colin Dre here late in the first game of the season. And there's coachable moments, right? You see Tony Elliott going over, talking to his young true freshman quarterback. Des Kitchings right there, the offensive coordinator, walking him through. This is all coaching. This is all learning moments for a lot of young players. They've got talent. They're young. But I think we've seen some good things from Virginia tonight. Sparks punting away. His eighth punt of the afternoon. His leg is going to be tired. D. Williams retreats to the 25. D. Williams with a good return again. Went for 54 earlier and crosses midfield here. D. Williams, as Coach Eckler says, at a boy, punt return team. Special teams coaches are a different breed, Jesse. They get hyped. Especially when you played thing. linebacker, Bill Snyder. Mike Eckler, let's go. ABC College Football is presented by Gillette Labs, the next generation of shaving. The 91 Sugar Bowl, Tennessee and Virginia. 
UVA was up 16 zip, and then Tennessee stormed all the way back, 23 to 22. Affleck trivia question. Go back to the early 90s with these two teams. Both Virginia and Tennessee had wide receivers with multiple NFL Pro Bowl selections in 91 Sugar Bowl. Who are they? Nico Ayamaliapa is in the game at quarterback for Tennessee. Dylan Sampson with the carry. Well, this guy was the number four rated pocket passer coming out of high school. Six foot six, and he can run. He is athletic. Here's Nico. Iamaliapa showing you his shiftiness as he goes in. You can hear the crowd reaction. Oh, yeah. Listen, these Tennessee fans, they follow recruiting day in and day out. And this was one of the biggest gets they've had in many years. Bama offered him. Georgia offered him. Ohio State offered him. But Tennessee got the win. First down. Sampson again as he gets down to the 15-yard line. So we'll move the chains. Nico Ayamaliava from Long Beach, California. Six foot six, five star true freshman. Yeah, and the coaches were saying he's got this aura to him when he takes the field. Players around him just seem to respond. Here's Nico. Able to escape to the end zone, and it's incomplete as he was looking for his first college touchdown but couldn't connect with Caleb Webb. Well, backyard football right there. It was a great job athletically to get to the outside, just let that one get away from him. You gotta wonder the emotion going on in his mind too, right? He's been waiting for this, oh, his yeah. opportunity to take the field. So many fans excited about him and the future of this program with him a quarterback. Joe Milton filling on the sideline too. The crowd is chanting Nico. Listen to this. Second down with the true freshman quarterback in. He zips that ball to the 10-yard line and gets it complete to Caleb Webb. Nico was actually with the team prior to the Orange Bowl. He was allowed to early enroll and get in practices. Then he traveled to Miami, so he's been around the program for a bit now. Sampson straight ahead, and it will be first and goal balls. That's so big for Josh Heupel, too, from the recruiting effort to try to keep this thing rolling, right? You lose Hendon Hooker, Joe Milton comes in the next year. Joe Milton's gone after this season. Nico... Iamaliava taking over after this, and it's just having guys where there's no drop off. You've seen that at the best programs around the country Alabama, Ohio State, Georgia, trying to do that here at Tennessee. And do we have arms up? Yes, into the end zone goes Dylan Sampson. So Sampson now with four touchdowns, three rushing, one receiving. Man, and only a true sophomore. No, oh, here's your backfield. Here's, <laughs> here's your Dylan there's Sampson. There's a lot of depth, man. Nico Ayamalapa. No doubt. Backfield. So Nico Ayamalapa comes into the game. Dylan Sampson just keeps doing what he's been doing. And Tennessee, with the same offensive production that we saw a year ago, exactly what they have been. A year ago, they were number one in the country at 47.3 points per game. They're sitting at 49. Let's go back and look at the day for Dylan Sampson. Yeah, it started off in the passing game in a very first drive of the game. This is a critical fourth down. Nice job by Joe Milton working through his progression, getting it to his running back out in space. He does the rest, but he's been good inside the tackles, too, down close. Physical running, low pad level. They run the speed option. He's able to use the speed, and they're leaving him in there and giving him some more reps and some more run. This is another guy that's going to be instrumental in this offense. I think on that last drive, it's kind of cool, right? You saw two key figures, a quarterback yes. and a running back, and Sampson and Ian Maliava. We talk about this offense being prolific and setting records, but they got to keep taking the next step, and those are two players right there that have a lot of football to be played together certainly have a lot of Vols fans very excited. Listen, we're not going to get a great sample size of Ayamalava for a long time, but you just look at Nico and you see the length and the wiriness and that yeah. the ball comes out. But well, he's like a YouTube sensation, too. Yeah, he is. You can go on social media, watch him in like seven-on-seven seven camps, make ridiculous throws. Nico Ayamalava into the game for the first time. Well, we showed you that 1991 Sugar Bowl between these two teams that Tennessee won and that those teams were loaded with talent we uh, asked you i think i played i think i was a teammate of one of these guys seriously yeah herman herman moore oh he 
he was excellent. The Aflac trivia question, you know, so they had wide receivers. All right. For, yeah, there it is. Herman <laughs> there it Moore. is, yeah. Herman Moore and Carl Pickens. Wow. Who had a touchdown in that 1991. I remember, I remember being, I remember we were working Herman Moore out. Jim Fossil and, and Sean Payton called me into the bubble on, on an off day to work out Herman Moore as a free agent. I couldn't believe I was throwing to him. I grew up watching him play for the Detroit Lions. Remember Scott Mitchell, the left, oh, of course, throwing yeah. him the ball, Barry Sanders. I couldn't believe I was throwing to Herman Moore. Speaking of famous names, Jack Greasy is in the game as they give to Sidarian Harrison, a very good-looking true freshman. Jack Greasy was the running back for Virginia on that play, so we may see some of him here in this fourth quarter. Scott Greasy's son, who played at UVA. Brian Greasy's nephew and the grandson of Bob Greasy. That's pretty good lineage. That is football royalty. And he had a very big spring game. Super athletic, fast, strong running back is Jack Greasy, the next of the great football family and here is Jack as he hits the hole well this is a big moment right now too for Virginia's offense this season obviously we don't know at this point the extent of Tony Musket's injury but we've got a true freshman in Colin Drea now taking over in his first action and it's important to have some success it's important for some things to go right because you look down the schedule they don't have any gimme games coming up here very quickly james madison next maryland nc state they're going to be competitive whoever's playing quarterback is going to have to play at a high enough level to get that done so this is a very important quarter for this true freshman as greasy gets the call again this time off the right side so anthony calandria in the game the true freshman musket just earlier in this fourth quarter was driven hard into the turf by tyler Barron, and he left favoring that left shoulder was wincing in pain des kitchings the offensive coordinator remember he was a running back coach for the atlanta falcons for a couple years has a real good understanding of the running game he has got to be happy with what he's seen here in the second half from his offensive line and his running backs. This is going to be paramount for them, having success this year, regardless of who's playing quarterback. They've got to be a more physical unit than they were last season. Third down and four. Jack Greasy, as he keeps it, does Calandria, and he goes ahead to midfield for a first down for UVA. Well, there you see the athleticism from Colin Dre off the edge. Tennessee was bringing pressure with the blitz. He was able to keep the football in the zone read and show you some of that speed. Kentucky was the only power five offer Colin Dre had coming out of high school, but you mentioned it, Joe. This coaching staff found out very quickly in fall camp he's got that it thing, whatever that is, that quarterbacks need to have, right? When you get in the huddle, Ten other sets of eyes believe in you, and, and he made this a competition in the offseason with Tony Musket. Yeah, I'm curious to know how you exactly define it. As you see him on first down, Greasy goes ahead to the 50. You sit there, listen, you played the position. Anthony Calandria, a true freshman, as Musket comes back out of the locker room. Is it just exuding confidence into swag? What is it? How do you define that? I think it's a combination of a lot of things. I think it's confidence. I think it's also that the fact that football matters to you and that your uh -huh. teammates sense that. We talked about Tony Musket earlier, day one. Katie had a great story about him showing up and saying, look, we're going out and throwing at this time. Everybody be there. It's taking ownership. Whether you're the starter or you're the fourth string, Football matters to you. You work hard. You lead by example. And it definitely helps if you've got some swag. Second and eight. Greasy. And as he goes ahead for four yards. Grew up right in Virginia. His father, Scott, played at UVA. UVA legacy family. Jack Greasy now sitting there on grounds as a sophomore. with 169 total yards, 54 plays to Tennessee's 80 plays. And they're down in five. He's going to feed Jack Greasy at this point. Is Arian Carter making a tackle there for Tennessee? Big time recruit. Yes. Talked about Ian Maliava on defense. This guy was the number five rated inside linebacker. Guy coming out of high school. He hasn't played a lot of linebacker. He converted his senior year in high school from running back to the linebacker position. He's learning it. They think he is going to be special. 
has a chance to be one of the best in the nation because of his athletic ability. And he's just one of, you watch his high school film and Ridiculous. wherever the ball was, <laughs> there is he where he, it didn't matter where he was a start of play, yeah. wherever the ball ended up is where he was. Yeah, big time recruits now. You're seeing it late in this game on both sides of the ball for the Volunteers making plays. Sparks has been out there all too much punting his ninth punt of the day. Fair catch at around the 10 yard line. Gonna size up the future of Tennessee, especially when it comes to this big season ahead when we return. Joe Milton out of the game, his team up 49 to 10 after his big stat line. Katie? Tess, you know Joe Milton's the oldest of seven siblings. He spent years taking care of his brothers and sisters, which he says has prepared him to look after 100-plus teammates. But he takes no greater pride in helping anyone on this team other than Nico. Ever since he arrived prior to the Orange Bowl, he has been in his corner. After the TD, he came over to celebrate, but then he put his coaching cap on and had a long conversation with Nico. It's these kind of relationships that you see often on this Tennessee sideline speaks to the culture that Heupel's been able to instill. Great point, Katie. You saw that with Hendon Hooker and, and Joe Milton last year, too, really the last two seasons. This is Cameron Selden, another true freshman now carrying the ball. Well, and listen, for Joe Milton, it's going to be critical because there's a Virginia player slow to get up here. It's going to be critical for Joe Milton to play at a high level, but can he do it week in, week out? It's awesome he was the MVP of the Orange Bowl. These look pretty good here today, but when you're in this grueling SEC schedule. Can you do it every week? Can you look what's coming up for Tennessee? Awful. Florida, you haven't won at Florida since 2003. UTSA is good. They've, they scored 63 on you last year at South Carolina. A&M, Bama on the road after you beat them last year. And then a very good defense here in Kentucky. That That's is it. awful. Yep. That's just absolutely awful. And for this team to go where they want to go, to win an SEC East division for the first time since 2007 and be a college football playoff caliber team, you've got to survive that gauntlet. That's the guy that's going to have to do it. Now, that means there are going to be many wonderful updates coming from the studio in those weeks from Kevin, Booger, and Dan, guys. Guys, right now, I think everybody's presenting the rose to Shador Sanders, Dan. Oh, my. Announcing today, it's not just going to be Caleb Williams and Drake May that we talk about at the quarterback spot. Move the pocket, find the open receiver downfield. He has been lights out today. TCU, by the way, had a big return inside the five-yard line. They're down right now. And we've got a good game coming away. Number 10, Washington hosting Boise State after us in Tennessee. Jess, let me get your reaction to Shador Sanders' stat line. Yeah, at, I like that. At 38-35 in the fourth I think that was Orlovsky, I think, given his first impression rose to Shador Sanders. Yeah. And I'm with that, too. Very impressive. Travis Hunter also getting in the conversation. Paul Hornung Award, maybe. Most versatile. But 25 of 43 for 444 yards and three TDs. That's a great start at Colorado. A lot of people were curious to see what that was going to look like. I said this earlier. Sean Lewis calling plays, I think, is massive. But they've got some weapons. Yamaliava quickly gets it out to Caleb Webb. And, and to your point, the Horning Award is for most versatile player. So a guy who's an extraordinary defensive back and had a critical interception at the goal line, Travis Hunter, has 10 catches for 107 yards. That, that's ridiculous. That's ridiculous. I mean, to have that kind of impact defensively on special teams and then on offense, that's, that's why that guy was the number one high school prospect coming out. Yeah. The, guy, the guy that Prime signed... The Jackson State, I mean, that, that dude's different. And he's utilizing him. So just say, I'm going to put my best player on the field, no matter what it takes and where he has to be. Jackson Ross punting away here with under five minutes to play. And we will take a break and talk about big picture for Virginia, considering everything when we return. So looking forward to Sunday night for LSU Florida State oh, Camping gosh. World kickoff in Orlando, 7.30 Eastern right here on ABC. Tennessee fans loving this scoreboard. By the way, this the strap, the right strap on the overalls had no chance there. Well, no, it's it's also it's really hot. I yeah. mean, you got well, I like the look. you can to get the oxygen flow going, however you're gonna get that done. Good execution. Anthony Calandria. And finishing the game at quarterback as Foster takes the carry. College football rankings, Jess, are brought to you by Verbo. And a 
course, the game we just talked about, you will see prominently listed when you look at the top ten. Yeah, it's, it's obviously going to have a Heisman impact and a national championship impact, too. You know, I, I think it's really interesting when you look at the top four right here, right now, three new quarterback, three new quarterbacks, right? At Georgia, yep. Ohio State, and Alabama. How quickly can those guys transition? I think that's one big advantage that Michigan has early this year is having J.J. McCarthy back. Faustin again. Gets the carry here. Final four minutes of this game. Isn't it just incredible, Joe, to think about, like, you know, Tennessee in the big picture, being in the position they're in now? You know, obviously, like, I played against Peyton Manning back in the day, so I saw what Tennessee could be in the late 90s. I played against them on the road when they won the national championship. I mean, that is, Neyland Stadium is a scary place when they've got it going, but how quickly is Josh Heupel turn this thing around the, the now going into his three years it's unbelievable i mean not just not just the football success the culture change yeah the positivity considering where the program was it's an extraordinary job Austin, as he gets a first down for uva just it'd be remiss if we didn't wrap up what was the big headline coming into this game and that was all the emotion surrounding the university of virginia the football team, the circumstances of playing the first game since the senseless tragedy of November of last year. Mike Hollins returning to the field um, in a heroic effort simply to play the game. But you cannot, and there is Hollins with a coach's arm around him. For that young man to simply come back, a young man who carried a football again as Glandrew is going to air it out. Uh, this young man nearly lost his life. This young man nearly lost his life for acting heroic, for trying to help his friends in the face of unspeakable horror. And this is how the day started with Hollins coming out here to return to the sport, which took guts, took a decision to be around this again, to dedicate himself. But he said something, Jesse, that I thought was very profound because I've never met a true great man in life who hasn't overcome incredible adversity. He said, I just felt like enough had been taken from me yeah. and I wasn't going to let football be taken from me as well as it's been a day to honor Devin Chandler and Lavelle Davis Jr. and Deshaun Perry. Well, and the reason why he wanted to come back and play football again, again, you know, nobody would have blinked if he decided to take the year off or to transfer, but he decided he wanted to come back and he wanted to honor his fallen teammates' legacy. The, the inspiration that this guy has been, not just to his team, but to the community, I mean, you just can't simply overstate that. And again, this is a, is a community and a team that is still reeling. We heard Tony Elliott say it earlier. Katie had a great story. It's football, and the field and football is a safe space, and it's a safe haven for these kids to come out here and do what they love to do and be together. And it's a huge part of the human process. You see Nate Fawson gets it to the 30. And just to, you know, wrap up the Mike Holland story, his mother, Brenda, has played a central role bo both in his recovery and in being a part of messaging things properly with the university and everybody on grounds back in Charlottesville. And I, I feel very strongly about, about saying this. There will be incredible highlights across the country today. There will be things that we cement far too much as being celebrated of college football, and they're disposable. Those are disposable moments that we try to build up as significant. There is nothing that happens today in college football more substantial than what Mike Collins did earlier today of simply returning, of simply coming back, of making a decision that this would not be taken away from him when so much was taken away from him. So great job, Mike Collins. You are truly a champion of the human spirit of resiliency. Freshman Calandria going to take a shot to the end zone, and that was overthrown as he was looking for J.R. Wilson. It's going to be interesting now to see what happens if Tony Musket is unable, if he's out for an extended period of time, how you approach things. If this is week one and your starting quarterback is injured. And you have to ask yourself, if Des Kitchens, the offensive coordinator, how much do you have to change the play calls based on who's playing quarterback? And that's something that this coaching staff obviously will have a lot of conversations around, and how do we have to structure our game plan based on what we saw in fall camp, what each guy does the best. If it is Colin Drea, I think there have been some good moments here in the last couple of drives. We just need to build on that. As Greasy gets the carry, mentioned Jack Greasy, grandson of Bob Greasy.
Greasy, nephew of Brian Greasy, son of Scott Greasy. And on the flip side, I think if you're Josh Heupel in Tennessee, I know that there was a little bit of a sputter in the middle. He got off to a great start, scored a touchdown early. They've ran the ball extremely well. Joe Milton has looked poised and confident. The defense, to me, has been the star of this game mm -hmm. so far for Tennessee. Tim Banks, the job he has done, it looks like they've taken the next step. This is a defense that prides themselves on getting pressure, but their D-line was so active and dominant today. They can really help themselves out in the back end in coverage this year if they're able to get more consistent pressure with only four guys. This could be a complete team. Bring pressure against the freshman who sends it to the end zone incomplete. And there, listen, this was a very good team last year, but there were moments where they were incomplete defensively. The South Carolina game is such an outlier. But that's got to be a revenge moment, well, right? Well, that's a great point, though, because, you know, you go back and watch that game. They're blitzing a lot, but yes. they're not getting home. Okay. And South Carolina is lighting them up defensively from a pass defensive standpoint. This was the fourth worst unit in the country a season ago. South Carolina scored 10 touchdowns in 11 possessions that game. They need the D-line to be dominant. It's probably never going to look quite like it did today necessarily. But week in, week out, they have got to make plays in the trenches to survive the schedule. As Betridge puts it through. So the freshman quarterback able to get some snaps, some reps, and lead them to a field goal drive here with 39 seconds to go as Josh Heifel looks on. We were looking ahead at that schedule. I agree with you. As tough of a stretch as you are going to see that he will be facing. And then the meat of it where you go back-to-back -back weeks of Texas A&M at home and at Alabama, an Alabama team that they beat a year ago with Chase McGrath's knuckleball 40-yard And again, goal. it's amazing because, you know, you said it earlier, they lost the SEC Player of the Year and Hendon Hooker, the Blitnikoff Award winner in Jalen Hyatt, Darnell Wright, the 10th pick of the draft. And we're still sitting here, and everybody's acting like, well, they should score 46 points again, though, right? I mean, the expectation is massive on that side of the ball. I think there's a lot of positives to take away from this. If you're Josh Heupel, they're going to clean things up. You play one game at a time. You can't look too far down the schedule. You just play your next opponent. Tonight, you go back to Knoxville, get some J.C. Holdway, maybe some Adopo pizza. Oh, you spent a lot of time there. I, I, I have, and I'm happy about it because the food scene in Knoxville right now is a little dead-end barbecue, the burnout. It is strong. Calhoun's, too. Big fans. UNC South Carolina set to come your way tonight. Tennessee next week. We'll be back home in Knoxville for Austin P. UVA will be hosting James Madison. And then tomorrow night, the top 10 much anticipated matchup on ABC. Number five, LSU. Number eight, Florida State. It is the Camping World kickoff game from Orlando. It was an absolute thriller last year when both programs, you had the sense. Listen, LSU was retooling, new coaching staff, but very good roster in the transfers. Florida State was gaining momentum. You look back and you realize it was that game that planted the seed. It was a thriller. It came down to the last play. That planted the seed to the rise that we've now seen with the Blue Bloods. That's what you love about games like that early in the season because the trajectory that each program takes after the game. It doesn't mean that the losers knocked out of the college football playoff by any stretch, but so much riding on this one week one, especially the way last year ended too. Yes, and I would say especially for Florida State because that is a, if they can get it, that's a signature win. Speaking of that matchup last year, here you go. We can't play any worse than that, I don't think. You see the look on Brian Kelly's face, and I think he went on to win the SEC West after that. And, and, and you didn't have any energy drinks. Oh, up in the so you, no, no, I mean, that was that was you at your A plus. That was incredible energy out of you. That was espresso dopio to the max. <laughs> that was a quad spro for you. All right, what's the big takeaway from Tennessee week one, Jesse? I think it's defense number one, being physical. And I think Joe Milton, aside from one series, I think he looked really poised, really under control. And you can see the talent on this team and why people think that 
they can contend for a college football yeah. playoff spot. You know it's been a good day when third stringer Gaston Moore is in at quarterback. Is that kind of second half especially for Tennessee? Joe Milton went for 200 yards, two touchdowns passing, two touchdowns rushing. Dylan Sampson had four touchdowns overall. And that Tennessee offense, just the way you've known it to be for the past year, 49 points, 49-13. For Katie and Jesse, I'm Joe Tessitore. Enjoy the rest of your night. That does it from here in Nashville. Let's get you back to Kevin, Booger, and Dan in our ABC scoreboard studio.